towards the end of it. It's not the beginning. <laughs> the yeah. So, where does it start? Okay, I got it. Okay. We'll call the meeting to order for Wiconica County Budget Session for Wednesday, May 22nd, 2024. First item on the agenda we have is uh, the Sheriff's Office. Glad to have everybody here. I'm so I'm glad to have you here as well. Just uh, from left to right, if you could, for the public. Thank you very much. Hamill and Finance Director. Major Todd Richardson, Sheriff's Office. Not Mike Lewis. Uh, Gary Baker. <laughs> uh, Sheriff does express his regrets that he's on vacation. He couldn't be here. But Chris Taylor with the Sheriff's Office. Great, good to see everybody here. Glad you guys took the time. Uh, Major, if you want to start off, you, I know you usually run the show. Uh, I'm going to follow Pam, lead a little bit. Uh, but to start off with, most of the increases that you see are based on training of trying to get us back to strength on our employees. We have nine currently in the pipeline, four that are graduating in June, five that will start the academy in July and we still have nine openings. That's not counting any retirements on top of that. So uh, as far as the training budgets, when you see the increases there, it's for special training and then follow-up trainings for all of those. Okay. But that and utilities and stuff related to the bigger facility are why you see some of the other increases like in um, electric, uh, propane, those type things, mm -hmm. or ga natural gas. In addition, um, the uh, civilian salary is up by the approx the five percent raises. As we've discussed at the previous meetings, we flip flop the money from OPEB to pension. Health insurance cost is going up for new employee spousal coverage and insurance increases. The health center costs are there for the employees that are um, would be eligible for the health center. Um, and then workers' comp, it's just a growth in the policy. Um, I did send to uh, Mrs. Hurley uh, last week that when we were doing another review of the, the numbers, there was a misunderstanding on um, the new scale that is listed in, in the budget. Mm -hmm. And uh, we missed uh, placing anyone who was on step 18 on step 18. So that does uh, create an additional need for 126,145 in salaries for sworn officers and $9,651 for FICA to match that. Um, we can discuss as to where we want to um, take that from. Their uh, longevity pay was included. It was um, a translation error in what I said to my staff, and so I will own that they didn't understand what I was trying to say when they were putting the numbers in. So it um, was, it, it just inadvertently gotten left off. That's good, that's good. I think we recognize that because you gave that to Angie as well, and we we're putting that into the formula of adjustments that have to be made. Yeah, I, I think I gave it to Laura okay. and Aunt, so yeah, it's, it's, um, Again, it was. Yes. Yes. It, yes. Again, uh, uh, things happen. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, Todd, did you want to? Anything else you want to add? Um, I think I'll just take your questions at this point. But uh, like I said, the the bulk of our increases is directly related to trying to get back to full strength, with having nine, well, nine in in the training and nine openings. We are starting to see some, a little bit better candidates coming forward, but Good. Uh, with nine in the pipeline and we're nine down, that, that probably will, uh, people retiring will probably make that number stay consistent throughout the year. So we're going we're gonna to be putting a lot of people through training. Uh, good, good. Anybody have any questions? Do you um, recruit from UMES, the criminal justice department? We, we recruit the entire East Coast. Uh, we're on an app now that you can look it up and mm -hmm. you can go online. Uh, it takes some of your time, so we uh, miss out on the people that are just applying so they can say they applied to a job. Oh, yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. but uh, for that part, mostly, yes. I think we've pretty much set up a table at every career day at every college uh, pretty much within a two-hour drive at least. Mm -hmm. So we, we have been... Uh, definitely doing that, Shane. Okay. And you, you've pretty much gone to every bar in Wicomico County, haven't you? <laughs> every bar. <laughs> every bar. 
<laughs> so, yeah, it, we don't go to a restaurant or anything that we don't have a server that we really enjoy talking to. Like, hey, have you ever decided to be a police officer? Give us a call. Because yeah, that's, right. in reality, that's kind of where we are nowadays because we aren't getting the applicants that we used to get. I mean, hey. it's, it, nobody is. Um, and we get seven that, that'll say they'll show up for the next day. Uh, for interviews, and we end up with two. So sure. we've been lucky with with the amount mm -hmm. that we have had actually uh, mm -hmm. uh, applying. Yeah. We're also limited on how many people we can put in the academy at one time because everybody is short across the eastern shore that all use Warwick as their training center. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've started looking into oh, using other academy. counties as well, but then you end up with uh, the meals cost and the overnights and all that. That gets expensive very fast. In in the training, and I think this has been answered before, but so we invest a lot of money in training, sending them to Warwick. If they go through the training, you know, get to be a sworn officer and they don't stay for a certain amount of time, do they have to refund the county? They're under contract. They're under contract. They're under okay. contract. But it's a case by case basis on whether or not we want to fight to keep that person. Uh, employed if they no longer desire to be a police officer in general but if they don't want to be a police officer and they just quit so you don't try to go after a refund for the, this amount spent on training we haven't so far not on ones that leave the um, the industry if they're jumping from us to another agency yes we go after them but if they're saying my police career I don't I don't want to be a police officer anymore we're not going to hold them to a contract and, and say, yeah, yeah, we don't want them out there. They've become a liability the day they decided they didn't want to be a police officer. Right. And going back a ways, <clears throat> we actually did lose one of those in court. Um, that The person went to Salisbury City Police Department, and we lost that in court. Um, but that's, I'm going back a lot of years, <laughs> a lot of years. But mm -hmm. okay. be interested to see how, you know, if it did go to court, how they would hold that up. So in retrospect, we're not going to get reimbursed for any training we do, whether they work out or not we attempt we attempt to get the reimbursement for ones that go to other forces and in a lot of instances we get those funds it's when they decide that they you know want to become you know a short order cook it's it's not worth our effort to try to go after those yeah okay we try to eliminate the bulk of those in our selection process We've been very lucky because our selection process is hard that we don't have many wash out of the academy or anything like that. And we're doing deep enough backgrounds. But with world climate is what it is, um, you know, this job has changed dramatically over the last four years. And uh, it's going to take us a long time to recover from that. If you are from another agency, say you are somebody from the Western Shore that's maybe retired from there, do they have to do any training? Uh, just the field training as long as they're still Maryland certified. So if they've been out of police work for more than three years, uh, it's a reduced, or I'm sorry, less than three years, it's a reduced amount of training. After three years, they have to repeat the academy completely. Okay. We are going to have to, I think, look at that contract, though, uh, Joe. That's a good point because, <clears throat> excuse me, the people that we are going to be losing are going to be those young people that, because we don't have LEOPs and all the other agencies have LEOPs, most of them on the shore. So those are the ones that we're going to leave that have three, four years experience that really don't have a lot of time to give up. We're not going to lose the people that are necessarily 8, 10, 11 years into our retirement. We're going to lose the ones in two and three years that can go over to Salisbury Police or wherever and and, uh, and get the LEOPs program. So that, that's a good point. We probably should look at that contract. Speaking of incentivizing, what what do you guys think from your perspective on what we could do to help retain and recruit more people to help help you guys? Help us? Flat out salary. 100%. Salary and, and the They're retirement. all looking at what I can make somewhere else. And uh, that mid-year or mid-contract raise that uh, you gave last year in the middle of a contract, that kept about five or six that were considering right. leaving to stay. We they, have to be comparable. They marked a difference in their pay, and they stayed around. But right we, now, we, that, that atmosphere is changing quickly. We're not comparable right now in a couple ways. Obviously, salary. Um, we're in the lower part of the salary on the shore. And then, of course, you know, our retirement system has some uh, issues, um, which you guys are familiar with. Right. Um, so we got to fix those because that's what we're competing against. 
you know, we're competing against people that are in LEOPs. We're competing against people that start out at 63.5 in Ocean Pines. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. So we have some issues that we've got to take care of as far as not only retention, but recruitment. And um, we've got a ways to go in that. And that vulnerability that he was talking about, the losing the, the one, two, three-year-old officer, that's like on basing on the, the average age we used to hire. Now we're hiring 21-year-olds, you know, a lot lower, so that you're going to extend that if they have five, six, seven, ten. It's not going to be that much to lose because they're young enough to go do another 25-year career. Right. Right. I, uh, I, I saw today that Denton starting three to five years experience, 70,000 in Denton. We're stopping by finance when we leave here because we have a couple things that we want to talk to them about, about being able to start um, somebody with five years experience a little higher. Um, yeah, so. so that we can recruit laterals like everyone else is recruiting laterals. Yeah. But, but we're not going to recruit laterals until we get our retirement system right because they have LEOPs. They're not going to come to us when they have LEOPs, when they have a, a better retirement system than we have. So we're not going to recruit them. Yeah. I got a quick question. Yes, sir. Um, I, I noticed there's not an increase in your computer and software and with moving into the new building, are we, are we good with all that stuff you guys need? Uh, a, per, a portion of that was purchased in fiscal 24. Okay. So um, we have made those purchases in 24 and there is stuff that is going over from what they have. Okay. So between those two things. That and there's budget in the FF and E for to equip the building as well. So that's a separate part that's already passed. Yeah. So um, in the 2024 budget, there was capital improvement, our capital budget for furnitures and fixtures. That is in the capital budget, not the operating budget. Okay. And so those three sources are covering the primary costs of um, the computers for them. Thank you. Just want to make sure you guys have the tools you need in your new building. We've got the tools. We just got to have people to work them. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> That's across the board. Yes. Yep. Dunkin' Donuts doesn't have enough people working there. Trust me. <laughs> yeah. mm. I have one other question. On a, we'll take a shift. I've heard this from one of our deputies that the amount of calls one of our deputies will have compared to the amount of calls that a Salisbury police officer has is there's a lot lower call rate in Wacomico County than there is Salisbury. Is that ever used as, you know, a recruitment tool? Look, you're not going to be as busy in Wacomico as you are in Salisbury. I mean, that's, I've heard that said. So, I, I, I don't think we'd ever say we're not as busy as Salisbury. Yeah. I think there's times where we run circles around Salisbury PD as far as calls for service if they're reporting everything on their shift briefings because we read every shift reading briefing from Salisbury City as well um, we, honestly we, we don't want people that don't want to work we want people that want to come here because you know they I want to do the job and the we, we don't want them to say well you're less busy we're gonna to come to you we want the people that are gonna work and one of our recruiting efforts is to tell people look we have areas that you can go into as a police officer as you age that is a little bit better on your body we have the courts division we have the school resources we have cid we have all those uh we have civil division we have all those extra divisions that people can go and work as throughout their career and you know some rotate in and out of those di divisions depending on what their current lifestyle is you know whether they have two new babies at home and being on midnights you know maybe they want to do that and we can offer that because we're a sheriff's office, not a, a police department that only does policing, street policing. So that's pretty much about it, fellas. I mean, we're okay with everything you have. All right? Better than listen to me talk for an hour, isn't it? <laughs> If you all get some time, I would encourage you to come over and take a look at the, uh, the building when you get a chance. Sure. Um, we're to the point where furniture is in it now, so oh, good. you can kind of see what it's going to look like and, and kind of see, um, you know, what each division looks like, and uh, it's coming along nicely. Um, can't tell you when we'll be in there, but um, it is coming along nicely. 
Who are we looking at? Okay. End of summer or something? Who are you talk to? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> we're still having supply chain issues, oh, especially really? with more of the technical. Um, the one thing that held us back for a while was we, did, we didn't have electricity until fairly recently and didn't have water from the city. Um, we That building was built off of generators and uh, oh, wow. one small landline. Right, yeah, yeah, That's, yeah. Wow. Gotcha. Sheriff yeah. Lewis said he'll be in there in June. He might be by himself, but he'll be in there, so <laughs> come see him. You all be happy with that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whatever he wants to do. Yeah. All right. Well, appreciate it again. Thanks for taking your time. Good seeing you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I will give my leftover time to the next person, whoever that is. Sounds good. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Okay, 3.21. Uh, 3.45 is corrections. Mm -hmm. So we have a half an hour. If anyone Does anyone have any questions? Mm, let me get to my corrections here. Uh, anything in general? Well, where did this seat come from, fund balance estimate? I That's the updated one. I provided you the same um, document at the end of the last meeting. Mm -hmm. I updated it based on yesterday's um, final number associated with the CAC. I had to put in an estimate of $1.5 million, but the number actually was $1,450,000. Mm -hmm. So I updated okay. it based on the actual budget amendment that was done uh, yesterday. And so that um, shows the estimate based on the current proposed budget and the expenditures that have been um, approved in fiscal 24 for where the unassigned fund balance will be approximately, will be approximately $53 million at the end of fiscal 24 um, because the, as I stated in the note, um, your use of fund balance that you budget gets moved out of the unassigned and goes into your committed and rainy day fund because of the fact that you have made that you know, commitment that you're going to spend that in the next budget. So uh, $53 million is the current estimate, 53.1 is the current estimate based on the submitted capital budget. Okay. Um, everybody got the um, the sheet from this morning, the second sheet from this morning, the final one you have it in front of you here. Yeah. I, <coughs> yeah. I, I I just I'm not too sure about the first one on the list. Mm -hmm. About. Making making that cut, I just which which the you're about? the uh, the fire. Uh -huh. I, okay. uh, I don't know how anyone else feels about it, but uh, I um. I mean, I'd, I'd love to give Randy Taylor the full amount early because he's 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 a good guy, and, and yeah, we've talked before, and I'm sure other council members have talked to him as well. But um, you know, we did 30% last year, and you know, even this is going to give them another 40% increase right. from last year as well. I so um, we tried to find a number. I mean, it's it's up yeah. it's up for you know discussion. Know discussion on here. But sure, I don't have one. May I have May I have a copy? Yeah, sure. Here, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. I have an extra one, Jada. Okay. Thank you. Oh, you just want to go down each one, and we'll see if we got. Yeah. The yeah. Mm -hmm. So the idea was to look at um, at 600, uh, at giving them 1.4, which would would create a cut of 600,000 in the budget. So that would leave Salisbury with 1.4 instead of 2 million. Um, I think also we got to look at what you know what we what we might be doing for our own for our own uh, uh, fire departments, you know, and they're they're watching very closely as well as to what we're how we're compensating Salisbury. Below thing, that, yes. The only thing I want to say, um, by me listening to the fire trucks and ambulances going by my home, mm -hmm. just by my house, the Salisbury, I'm talking about the Salisbury, um, they do a lot in the county. They do a lot in the county. Mm -hmm. And um, I know my neighbor across the street was two ambulances had to come to the house. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was two people, 
or what, but it was two at one time. They're just something I saw. But they're constantly going down toward Del Mar. They're going, you know, I don't know where they're going. They're turning down Baylor Lane, Herman right. Lane. You know, what I see just in my neighborhood. And I, I just... Um, well, the idea know, really, Shani, is... is it isn't so much of, of the service calls they make because that's we rec I recognize that too and that is important. Um, what we tried to emphasize before when Salisbury was in here was that the the demands that they have as far as the costs that they're incurring, um, they don't have volunteers for the most part. They have minimal number of volunteers, mm -hmm. and their costs are going to be you know much higher than anything we might do with the volunteers. Mm -hmm. um, so if there's any means by which the county can work on expanding EMS for the local um, uh, county fire departments. That would take a lot of relief off of Salisbury. Mm -hmm. But until then, we'd hope that we could maybe invest, depending on, hopefully maybe the SWOT analysis will show us something, but we could evaluate yeah, just, exactly how to solve that problem and invest yeah. in the county as much as we can to take that burden off of them. Yeah, we need, we need that. Because um, I just think about, I guess I get, no, when by me being on the city council and all that, see what they're talking about and everything. Sure. I just want to make sure it's, it's fair as much as possible. Mm -hmm. and it would be nice if we had our own. Bar, we're, bar. We're, we're going to be a few years out from that. Yeah, I right know it. I'll probably be gone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, okay. But it also took us by surprise because you know, there was a lot of negotiations beforehand when we went from about 770000 to a million. And um, and that was just two years ago. So we've gone pretty much from seven hundred and seventy thousand to one point four million. So we've we've pretty much doubled it in two yeah. years. It would be hopefully we get to a point in the next year and a half or so to where we feel very solid that a formula is driving what that number looks like mm -hmm. for all of the departments. I know, of course, that's different with EMS or or whatever. But it'd be nice to be able to really have something we can solidly stand on and say, okay, this is what's this is the cost. This is the amount that we're paying. Mm -hmm. um, well, so why was uh, six hundred thousand picked? Was it just um, was there well, a certain percentage? It, it was somewhat arbitrary. We just figured that um, that 1.4 could be a good comp to give them 1.4 million instead of giving them two million. Giving them 1.4 would be a, a pretty good compromise, and it's still a pretty huge chunk. It's a it's a 40 percent increase from last year, and that would free up about 600 thousand. What you're looking at here isn't what we're paying them. It's how much we we right. we're looking to possibly cut okay. that. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> And then we have the salaries. This is a, a possible proposal. There were suggestions as to uh, whether or not we could um, round off the salaries. There's concerns about whether the 20% increases seem rather exorbitant. Uh, so um, we looked at capping salaries to about 5% approximate. And that's what you would have there. You'd have a cost savings of about $547,000. That's what that line represents. So you're saying just five percent across the board? Yes. Well, that that's. Will that not work? Well, five percent across the board. There's three pay scales. So okay. I'm assuming this is five percent for the people that are not on the corrections and sheriff pay scale. I can speak to that. Good. Okay. So um, for the sheriffs, what I did was I excluded the sheriffs if they're. Um, there's a code on the um, budget control, position control document, uh, 1SG, uh, SGT, Corp, DFC, I think, and DPTY for the, the codings. So for those were excluded from this. And then I did not exclude corrections because I wasn't told that that was supposed to. That is at, okay. in the budget as a total separate scale. Okay, so. Um, and that is a, those have different percentages. So. If you're capping at 5%, that totally changes the scale of them. Okay, so I will, I, 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 I inquired about that, and um, but then I, because the, the only agreement that I had was the FOP one, so I can uh, exclude the corrections. You have, you have the salary scale in your budget. It literally says corrections well, in the budget. Let's just, Something let's in just, the budget still than having like what the agreement was. So I had the agreement for the FOP. There, there is no the agreement. There is a salary scale and has always been since the new salary scale, there's mm -hmm. been a separate salary scale for corrections. Okay. So yeah. Pam, if I'm not mistaken, didn't you guys update that through this budget process? Yes. And so if yeah. she is changing correctional, that means that 
the salary that, scale would have to be adjusted. So we'll, we'll have to adjust the salary scale as well. Okay. But right. that salary scale is not a strict 5%. It is. Um, so are you all including the corrections with this 5% cut? And then you're also including. That's what I was told to do because it wasn't an agreement otherwise. So either I'll have to also adjust the salary scale for corrections or. I would have to exclude those from the cuts of 5%. And the other piece that is in this is 8% for emergency services and for the, the, uh, the emergency services that operate out of the, the sheriff's department. So we need to know, are you really intending to adjust the salary scale for corrections and adjust the 8% for the emergency services? Because those were two very emergency services is having a hard time recruiting yeah. and maintaining. And so we very specifically stated emergency services was 8%. That corrections has a new scale. Right. And then there are, yes, there are some other people that are not 5%, but those two subsets. I'm asking the council, do you intend to bring those down to 5%? If the answer is yes, I need to know that because I literally will <coughs> check every person in the system to make sure that it's been appropriately, because 2020-09 ties my hands. Mm -hmm. you're, talking about, you're talking about corrections and emergency services? Yes. All right, well, we can review that. Nothing here is permanent. This, okay. is, just, this yeah. is just something to get started with. I was going to say, I don't, I don't see the need to go into anything that has to do with public safety. Mm -hmm. I don't want to touch any, it, like if we've got to give them an 8%, um, I'd be okay with, with that. Um, but if it's anything other than corrections and, and uh, law enforcement or uh, emergency services, um, anything other than that, if, if everybody wants to do like 5% across the board, I'm, I'm okay with that. Okay, well, we'll, um yeah, we'll I look can at these easily again. change sure. the emergencies. I mean, literally, it's a yeah. one. As I, as I stated last year, yeah. as finance director, I need enough time to, it is all well and good that um, your internal audit, the internal auditor has come up with a number. But right. as the finance director, I will have to do so. I, I can't make these changes on the fly on the night you guys want to adopt the budget. Well, that's why we have a, a recap today. Okay. Sorry. Uh, we understand. Also, uh, I, I, my, the intent is that I give you my spreadsheet that has, I, I've, I've taken the, the PDF, digitized it into a spreadsheet. Um, so it, it actually has like the specific amount for each position that's actually on the position control document, that exhibit F. So you'll have that from me. I understand. I still will have, we will still have to check it. Yes. But, but you won't just be given a blanket number. It'll be allocated to each control Doc, each number that has a number. Then that does not. Each position will, that has a number. Yeah, but I will tell you that number does not translate exactly to what is in the munis line item. We can anticipate that. So, but okay. she's trying to help you, let you know that what she's going to give you is what she can do to the best of her ability. Okay. That's Shane? why it would have been good to have actual every position in that position control document, but yep. not every position's on that position control document. No, the position control document is the full salary for the full year. That doesn't mean that the budget is funded at the full year for each position. So during Shane. the budget recap, will you guys be here? Yes. So wouldn't it be more beneficial to? I, I know why you jumped up here because we had a half hour to kill. But wouldn't it be more beneficial to go ahead and have corrections? They're here. So we can ask the questions. Oh, they're here. Mm -hmm, they're here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then do the yeah. board. And Good call. No, that makes sense. Well, see, we weren't. Well, I didn't realize they were all here. I, yeah, I didn't realize yeah, they, they, they were here. in here. Come on up. <laughs> yeah, Chris is here. Step, step right up. How's everybody? Good. Good to see you. Hey. So, Pam Oland again, finance director. Chris Tyler, director, Wacomico County Department of Corrections. Eric Dickerson, accountant. Sean Kimball, deputy director of administration. And Mike Jamison, deputy director of operations. So, um, 
as with all the other departments, um, pension, OPEB, health center, health insurance, workers comp are all um, adjusted based on previously explained um, variances. Um, maintenance sanitation is up $103,000 uh, from the prior year. We have um, contracted with a new um, company. We have an uh, increase in supply costs. The new contractor has an increase in duties um, to help keep the facility um, better maintained. And thus, between the cost of the product as well as the additional duties, the cost is up in that line item. Um, $110,000 growth in meals, that is a requirement we have to feed, um, and that is a new, the new contract rate for the facility. Uh, $215,000, this is contract growth as well as required um, mandated items from the state that we have to perform for our um, inmates. Uh, we're increasing um, computers, that's based on IT, and we are increasing some capital other for some uh, repairs on an HVAC system, road uh, millings, and up, uh, upgrading the drug room testing. On the salary side, as discussed, uh, as we were just stating, there is a new salary scale being proposed. The growth between a CO2 and a CMO is 7%. Uh, growth between a CMO and CCR and CSG is 9%. And then there between each grade until a CWD is 14%. Each step um, until step seven is a 2% growth. Again, that is spelled out on the, um, the grade scale that you were provided in the budget. Okay. So open it up for questions related to corrections. Question. There was uh, one question that I had. Um, we're trying to see where we can find uh, some monies because we're looking at other areas that we might want to add funding to. And um, in corrections of what we noted, in the last year's capital uh, improvement program, there was about $1.8 million allotted to fiscal year 2025 for the building expansion. And now this year, though, the, um, the budget reflects a 2.7 I believe 2.7 uh, million for fiscal year 25 and 2.7 for 26. And the question really was how, how the project went from a 1.8 million to a $5.4 million project. And we were looking to try to find some leeway in there, maybe just instead of 2.7 this year, make it um, a million this year and try to figure out how we could make adjustments for the year years out. I had requested an updated quote mm -hmm. um, just a guesstimate from EI Associates who mm -hmm. did all the planning and everything for us and with all the materials costs and the first um, estimate did not include any price increases that may occur in the future years. Mm -hmm. the, um, so it went from 1.8 to I think it was almost 5.9. Mm. Wow. Yes, we, I was quite shocked as wow. well. So, but and that's I, I believe there was also a little bit of an expansion of the concept. Um, it wasn't just so we're now we were able to split it into two group two sections because there is two areas that are being done and so 2.7 million dollars um, is one of the sections and 2.7 is the other section so cutting it down to one million dollars will not accomplish half of the project can you, so can you explain the projects so it's, it's, Brief, just it's expanding our medical department, um, which we do not have any um, isolation cells. When I say isolation, I mean medical isolation for like TB, COVID, et cetera. So we, we are implementing cells back there for that. As you know, our population is more and more mental health and addiction. So we're adding more medical cells, more suicide cells, um, separate shower area back there just for that area. So it's going to give us four. Hold on a second. I don't want to misquote. Um, seven additional cells, two with airflow control um, for the infectious diseases. Um, and the other area is in the dormitory side with the population that we have now. Not that We have the females housed there, and they can't necessarily 
always get along, so we need some cells, and that's what the other area is, is for, because all the females have to be out of sight and sound from all the males. So we need some cells so back in there. you're actually putting more cells on A block? They're not on A. It's in the work release. They're in the, the old, old work release, release unit, okay. which is a dormitory. So we need some cells over there. Okay. Regardless of who we have housed there, we're going to need cells. So. Is it the same, is it the same, um, I know when the sheriff moves, the sheriff department moves, what would be, are you utilizing any of that building at all? There is discussion. It hasn't been finalized, but um, in the out years, there is a discussion of moving certain portions of the correctional facility to um, the sheriff's office, current office. Um, again, it is more of it is still being discussed as to the highest and best use for that facility. But we do have um, tentative plans if that's the route we go. Okay. Okay. Uh, one thing, I, I accidentally deleted my entire file for the budget this morning. I have no idea how it happened or where it is, so I don't have all of my prompts like I normally do here with my notes. Um, what was uh, your? You had a promotions line, I think, of um, of two hundred twenty-one thousand. I say promotions, vacancy promotions, maybe or salaries and promotions. Sa salary promotions. Yeah. I believe. Yes, $221,000. So as people move up, as they're being promoted mm -hmm. on the scale, um, it gives us the funding. So again, 202009 allows us to do normal course promotions. So we have put everybody on the position control document as they're currently standing. But if there are promotional opportunities during the year, we have the ability to promote them and we put funding in here for those promotions. Yeah, the reason I ask is because it seemed like we look at all the other departments and you know, what's going on with the other departments, and I think there were about four or five that had the same line item, but they were usually in the you know in the area of forty thousand or twenty thousand, and we just thought that we, we weren't sure where you came up with two twenty one, and it seemed extremely excessive. One of the other things we also did, so as I have talked previously, in um, we typically do a full funding for every position within the county mm -hmm. and we do not take an attrition rate into effect um we have taken an attrition rate because of the level of i think uh, i think you're currently at 40 down 42 42 down so mm. um mm. we don't expect full employment by july 1st mm -hmm. And so to help um, balance this budget, we did do, we have them at full employment come January. So we did do two quarters of ramping up that full employment, but we do have full employment for them by January. Um, but again, they have people that uh, once they go through the, they had some late academies because of COVID. So they have a lot of people that aren't certified yet. Once they're certified, they then are eligible for a promotion and that increases the dollar amount. So we have all of that built in to between the promotion and then we have an attrition rate in the full-time number. Um, is that part of the parcel to where there were so many salaries, about 10, 12 salaries that went from 40, 44,000 to 22,000? Half a year or something. Um, page, page five. Page five. Of what? In all the salaries? So okay. Total of 25 that you took money from. Yeah, those, those are the ones that are being funded at their, their vacant positions and they're being funded at partial year numbers. Half a year. This one, two. So again, we did, um, mm -hmm. I want to say it was um, 10, I think it's uh, 20 fully, fu uh, fully funded for the full year. We have 10 more coming in for funding um, October 1st and 10 more coming in for full funding come January. 
So again, it is the first time that in my memory of being with the county that we have actually put in an attrition rate um, because we don't expect full employment July 1st. We, we, we don't have 40 in the pipeline at the moment. So you're, by, by doing what you did, you're, you're saying that there was, um, those are certainly, we know those aren't the salaries that we're talking about, but you're saying that you've allowed for the fact that you realize that there's going to be, and it looks like the number's almost the same, 200,000 almost. Yes. So that would allow you to keep the position and put a, a number value in there, but knowing full well that when that person was hired, you're going to be shifting money. Well, from your salaries no from we're deal. also have people we have a lot of people that we're trying to get certified so we have people that are fully hired that aren't certified at the moment and thus they are eligible for a promotion once certified so that's what that other number is. that's what the promotions is yes I get it but what I was saying was in, in the when you send the 40 down to 22 if you hired all those positions right now you'd be you'd only have half your salaries in place Correct. But you're saying that you're having trouble hiring so that when somebody comes in, you have at least enough in those in those sections of 10 salaries yes. to shift some monies over. So, yes. And okay. we, we spread it across different levels of positions. But most positions, when they're vacant, are at the lower level. It's not the higher levels that are vacant. So, again, we took a – in this department, we build in an attrition rate. Good. Anybody else questions for anything? Um, yeah. Go ahead. John. I was going to ask. So you're down 42. Is that what you said? Um, so what can we do to? I asked the same thing to the to the deputies. What can we do to help with retaining and recruiting? From what the staff are telling me, they're coming in. They're, get, they're, going, they're coming into us because it's easier to get in with us than it is with the state. We send them to the academy. Once they're certified, they're going to the state for that extra $10,000, $15,000. Yeah, right. So we're paying gotcha. to train them, sending them to the academy, but they're going they, they 20 also minutes some, down the road. They sign a training agreement. We do uh, do our attempts to collect. We do not attempt to collect if somebody, um, for the most part, just, again, leaves the industry. Right, right. Yeah. We'll, not, we'll never be able to yeah, cure good. that problem. What's um, what's your capacity now at the um, there? I mean, are you a hundred percent? Yeah, five hundred. Are you are you full? No, we're two thirty five. So you're you're able to hold five hundred, but you only got two thirty five. Yes, but yeah. it doesn't matter how many inmates we have. All of our staff is still the same. We still need the same amount of staff. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do you have different um, cell blocks or what do you call them, peers yes. closed off? No, right now we've got people everywhere because of no contacts, mental health issues, drug addiction issues. So the, the whole complex is open? Yes, that is correct. And being used? Correct. Okay. Where do you send the, um, I remember years ago you used to have a place for it. Immigrant, the migrant, immigrants. Do you still have that? No, ma'am. Ice, ice is no longer permitted in the state of Maryland. Oh, okay. All right. How many corrections officers do you have? One thirty-one, and we're down forty-two. We've hired fourteen since January, and we've lost ten since January. Hmm. And what are your shifts? Twelve hours, eight hours. Eight. Eight hours. Eight hours and 12 minutes, actually. What's more important, salary or benefits? I'm not a good one to ask on that because I have state <laughs> benefits. So any of you guys yeah, for, say? From people <laughs> From people coming in, I, I can tell you what I've heard from everybody else, but I'd, I'd be interested to hear what what you're hearing from they're the leaving, people. To me, they're leaving for the money. The money. Because the now is... The here, here and now, not looking for the future. Yeah. That's that's correct, yeah. and that's what we attempted. Again, we attempted. We are not going to be able to match the state's no. scale. We um, purposefully did higher than five percent 
on the scale that we have listed. Mm -hmm. uh, but the raise doesn't include the step, right? It's two separate things. So we, um, so for correctional officers, what we put in was we gave them all a raise on the first full pay period in July, and then they're all getting a step the first full pay period in January. So they're getting two if this budget passes as presented. So they're getting the new scale and then they'll get a mid-year because they will all move up a step. We have not, since we started the new scale with from Bolton, we have not given steps. This would be the first time that we would give a step. So we gave them, we split it up, we gave it, and that is part also part of the promotional, is the step is is also built Allowing into some foods. of that number Allowing as food. well. Yeah. Okay. So they're getting two amounts during the year. They're getting on the new scale, first full pay period in July, and first full pay period in January, they're getting their step. Okay. As presented. Yeah. Okay. okay. How's everything going over there? You guys, other than the budget, you guys okay? <laughs> we won't talk about it? <laughs> no, sir, that's bad, that's bad. Okay. Bad juju. <laughs> All right. Bad juju. Okay. So. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, yes. The, the attrition, uh, if you could send me the uh, position numbers that are those. I can get that for you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Right, uh, anything else you want to add? All right. Well, it's good seeing everybody. Thank, thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Y'all take care. Have a good day. All right. You too. Yep. Bye. Have a good weekend. If I don't see you. Already. Mm. Uh, Board of Education is here. Good. Great. <coughs> Them. I don't know if all of them are, but Board of Well, John's here. That's all we need, right? Come on, John. <coughs> yep. Yep. We're running a little early. Looking at his stuff. Pam Oatland again, finance director. Micah Stauffer, superintendent of schools. Good afternoon. Brian Regger, chief finance and operations officer for Wycombe County Public Schools. Uh, Jesse Reed, controller. So I will let them um, talk about um, their overall request, but I can tell you what is currently listed in as funded. Um, it is funded at maintenance of effort with no uh, one-time expenses um, and it is funded at a full funding for Fruitland Primary with $500,000 coming from PAYGO um, to keep the project on uh, uh, online and um, $20 million worth of bonding if we would follow the basic schedule that we had last year, which would have bond introduction in the second meeting in June, and we would have the sale at the end of October, 
uh, which are mid-October, the second meeting in October. So that would allow for funding at the end of October to give them um, cash in the month of November, which is what they would need for to keep the project in line uh, with their current projections. Okay. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm glad y'all got here early because we're we're moving. All right, yeah, yeah, we're about on time. Good. Uh, Michael, did you want to start with any? Sure. Uh, first, just want to say thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to be able to walk you through our budget uh, requests this afternoon. Uh, I'm also joined by uh, board members Dr. Bonnie Ennis, as well as board member John Palmer. Also have staff out uh, in the audience, uh, Mrs. Liesel Ashby, as well as Dr. Rick Briggs. And I have board member Alan Brown with me as well. So I just wanted to make sure that <coughs> they were introduced. Uh, I think we're going to start this afternoon just in talking briefly about capital funding mm -hmm. and one-time funding. And then I'm going to go into a little more depth about uh, maintenance of effort and our request for, for above that. Okay. Sure. Good afternoon, everyone. As uh, Pam alluded to, the funding for the school system is kind of a three-piece puzzle. Uh, first, uh, one of the three being capital funding, and we appreciate county government's uh, indication of willingness to fund the $20.5 million for Fruitland Primary. Uh, the funding in FY25 will allow us to proceed with construction documents. The actual construction start is contingent upon, of course, you know, county funding, additional uh, funding in FY26, as well as potentially forward funding a portion of the state allotment to meet the project cash flow needs. We don't like to start a project until we have a firm commitment of 50% of the cash flow. Not good for anyone to see footers and seal come out of the ground and, and have to put that on pause. So mm -hmm. that's where we are with that Fruitland Primary. Looking forward to moving forward with that. A uh, second portion of the potential budget is non-recurring costs. This gives uh, county an opportunity to provide some funding that is not then added to that baseline funding for future years. Uh, we did submit to uh, Council President Cannon a list of items that was signed off on and went to the state. They were approved, uh, including pri our pri priorities on that list would be the enclosure of the pod classroom area at Glen Avenue Elementary. If you've ever been there, that area of the classroom does not have doors on classrooms. So significant safety issue would also allow for sprinkler installation, which is required if we add those doors. Uh, and then also looking at some additional uh, security fencing in schools. We've done a lot of work improving that around the county. Some of that with uh, funding the council provided last year. We greatly appreciate that. And look to continue that to continue to, to provide additional security for our students and faculty. And then finally, uh, interior, interior door up and hardware upgrades in our schools. Again, providing additional security in the school to make sure our students are safe in the event of any uh, unforeseen circumstances. So that's our uh, capital and non-recurring, and I'll turn it back over to Dr. Stauffer to talk about the operating request. Sure, thank you. And then we'll certainly, uh, if you have any questions uh, at the end, please let me know. Okay. Uh, but in front of you are several slides from our previous budget presentations that we've had this spring, uh, some with uh, the council, also from the state of the schools. Uh, and you can see, starting with the second page, how our local funding, which is the middle line, uh, is below what it was back in 2010. And you can see how our state funding has increased over that period of time. Um, so that, that delineates our federal funding, local funding, and then our state funding. The next page is a summary of the mandates that we have now under the blueprint for Maryland's future, which is uh, why that state funding has increased, meaning that public schools now have a significant increase in the services that we are mandated to provide that we did not have to provide in the past. I wanted to make sure that you clearly understand that. Uh, mandates in the areas such as uh, resources for English language learners, special education students, pre-K education now uh, for public school students, teacher salaries uh, increases in training, uh, dual enrollment 
and our CTE program expansion, as well as the accountability and the tracking of funds all the way down to the individual student level, as well as the overall accountability that we uh, have to have when we get now audits and, and inspected from the state for the implementation of those mandates for Blueprint. I have a question. Sure. Um, this is the second page chart, um, the middle line. Does that include school construction funding in that, in that line? This is operating funding. Funding. So it's not operating. Does include. not include school construction. Okay, that's correct. The next uh, page are areas um, that state funding or blueprint funding, if you want to term it that way, does not provide funding for. On that next page, uh, you can see there that. These are areas that really would be very heavily dependent or relied upon local funding for. Okay, so uh, you see school safety and student discipline, <coughs> class sizes, athletics and extracurricular activities, art and music programs, uh, technology for instruction, field trips, other and student experiences, world language and our elective courses transportation and other costs of special education. Uh, the state funding uh, currently only covers about half of our special education costs here in Wicomico County. Uh, salaries for support staff and benefits for all staff. So those are areas that are not covered under the state funding or blueprint funding. So knowing that we have all of the mandates under Blueprint and all the important areas that I know we want for our schools, which rely heavily on local funding, which is that, that previous page there, that next page looks at the local funding. You can see where our per pupil local funding is next to last in the state currently. And it doesn't include um, school construction either. And none of these would include school construction. So I want to make sure that these comparisons, none of these include school construction. So we're next to last in the state. In the next um, page, you can see how the Crev county revenue has increased by $69 million since 2010, or roughly 59% since 2010, but the funding to the schools from the county has decreased actually by $850,000 in that same time span or has gone down by 2.2%. On the next page, when you look at the priorities for the county, uh, this shows that in 2010, the school system was 41% of the overall operating budget for the county, but now we are 26 percent of the county's budget, which is also, I did not compare that to all of that on that slide, but we're also one of the lowest by percentage of the operating budget for the allocation of the school budget in the state as well. So I just put this next slide in here twice because I just want to hit home again that we rely heavily on these things. And we get asked about these things a lot from our um, community, from our parents, from our, sta our staff and our students. Um, so, you know, want to put in that we want positive school climate and student discipline in our schools. We're concerned about our class sizes, especially when you look at the poverty of our students, the number of English language learners, the number of needs, the amount of needs that we have in our special education student population. Class sizes make a, a big difference. Um, we want art and music programs. We want to engage students in sports and extracurricular activities. Uh, we want uh, you know, to engage students in elective courses and things that they're interested in. We want to be able to do that and continue to grow that. So that all is very reliant on local funding. So the state and their funding allocation for Blueprint, those things aren't covered under Blueprint. And they see those things really as almost extras. I would say as a superintendent that those things really are essential to what we provide uh, our students. Um, so to the next page, I would just say that we're very appreciative of our capital funding. We're very appreciative of the few, few times that we've gotten above maintenance of effort over the last 15 years uh, regarding that. However, please know that we're still below the funding levels that we were 15 years ago. 
uh, in Wicomico County for local funding. So maintenance of effort does not account for inflation, does not provide us with the ability to continue to provide the class sizes that we know would make a difference uh, to our staff and to our students doesn't help us to continue to improve in school climate, student discipline, which we want to be able to continue to do and make progress on. So I asked Jesse earlier this morning to just run a comparison calculation for me that I could share. Um, so if our student population, our enrollment, right, if our student enrollment stayed exactly the same this year as compared to last year, okay, since our funding mechanism, as you know, I think you know that our funding mechanism, what we will receive next year in state funding and in local funding is based off of this past September's enrollment. So it's always lagging a year behind. But if the enrollment stayed the same, we would be receiving $3.2 million in additional state funding, right? And if we got maintenance of effort, we would not receive any additional funding. Okay, that's what that's what that is. So you can see on this last page that our inflation costs are 4.1 million just for next year. Utilities, health insurance, transportation costs, et cetera, the things that are listed on this last page. So staying the same for local funding and having a slight increase in state funding for blueprint mandates, which is why that did increase by 3.2 million, still doesn't cover our inflation costs, okay? So lucky, luckily our enrollment did go up this past fall by 200 students as compared to the year before. So that's why you'll see the little bump in maintenance of effort, I think it's 700,000 roughly. And then there is also a bump at the state level as well. But looking at what we're able to do for next year, that's those two, that little bump in the local funding and in the state funding has to cover all of our inflationary costs that you see listed on that paper, a step in 1% raises for our staff, which as we know, Worcester County is doing a step in 6% uh, for next year. It's gotta cover a handful, literally about five, new positions for the massive influx of English language learners that we've had this year, 350 alone just this year. Uh, and it also has to cover the drastic increase in the special education needs that we're seeing, especially in our youngest students with autism and some of the things that are happening there. So for us, an above MOE amount would at least allow us to cover those inflationary costs. So that's why we are asking for that. And then we could use that a little bit of additional bump in the state funding to actually do what it's designed to do under Blueprint, which is to meet the needs of the English language learners and meet the needs of the special education students and provide staff with the increase that they're supposed to get to by 2026. So uh, with that above MOE amount, we could hire more teachers. We could expand programs that we know are working already in our school system to address our English language learners and our increased special education needs. And um, that's what we would need to not fall further behind. Uh, what those state uh, blueprint funds are designed to do is to cover the things <coughs> under blueprint, which is what I discussed earlier. So local funds could be used to cover the inflation costs so we don't have to use the additional state funds to do that. We could use the blueprint funds to do what they're designed to do. So that's what our request is, and I believe that's what our community um, has very clearly uh, talked about with me. That's what I hear our parents talking about, our staff talking about. They want us to continue to, to try to do better things in our schools and not continue to fall further behind. So the, the last thing I'll say is that no matter where we end up, right, on capital funding, one-time funding, above maintenance of effort, what our request is, uh, for that, I would just ultimately say in the long term, my team and I would love to be a part of future discussions on a long-term plan for local funding in the future. What do we want to get to? You know, what are our goals for the school system? We can articulate those to you, but working with you to, you know, what's the five-year plan on local funding to be able to, to get to those goals and not, you know, kind of live year to year 
in a sense, but really to at least have some goals on, on what we want to do in the future. So I uh, just appreciate the time. Thank you all for, for giving us this opportunity today. Okay. Any questions? Got question. yeah. um, can you explain the increased amount in lease per purchase technology? Can, yes. Um, That's we've a been, Jesse question. Yes, sir. We've been <laughs> using our ESSER funds to pur purchase technology the last few years, the large um, COVID grants, mm -hmm. uh, but those expire. We're actually, they're expired at this point. We've already spent all the money. So next year we have to dip into the general fund to, to buy computers after we've had the luxury of not having to do so the last few years. Thank you. Yeah, you always, you always have a good, a really good argument. You know that. We try our we best. We really do. <laughs> Uh, and honestly, I will say that that we we have you know 15,000 students, parents, and uh, over 2,000 staff that we're in contact with on a regular basis. And these we put the things forward that we hear from them, right. um, and that we try to listen. I get it. Um, question for you, because no matter what the, we might do, what we might be able to do. Um, we're still nervous about the maintenance of effort as far as increasing that. That seems to be a thing. I mean, you, you guys are all used to it. Um, and I guess it's mainly it's because of, of the state formula, the way that they deal with it. Um, and, of course, we've more recently resorted to the one-time funding, which you did put in, in it, it, before the deadline, mm -hmm. which was really great. Um, so I've, I've never really understood quite uh, – I understand that the one-time outlay you're talking about is capital outlays, et cetera. But if we were to contribute to one time only, wouldn't that free you up to a certain extent to to have more room possibly to address more of your issues on your cost of doing business? It, I'll start, and if staff have anything to add to that, please do. But we have to make sure that we're following all of our budgetary guidelines as well. And yes, if you if you use one time funding and it may free up some costs, especially on the capital end, it doesn't um, really free up anything on the reoccurring costs. Mm -hmm. And when we're a school system, 80% of our costs are people. That's just the way it is. And, and, and if we have additional needs, additional English learners, additional special education needs, those types of things, the way that we can address those needs most of the time is through new staff to be able to work with them and also new programs, neither of which are one-time things, right? We're, if, if we have new staff and we have new programs, we would want to continue them year after year. So they're reoccurring costs. Uh, so the state's not going to approve those types of things for one-time funding eligibility. Uh, and it's also not going to enable us to really, it'll free us, maybe free something up for one year, but it's it's really good, just going to probably tick off a new capital project, uh, uh, some smaller project that we wanted to get to uh, for that purpose. Yeah, and then just to follow up on that, we do have a in our annual budget, we do have a, a line item for capital outlay, which covers some smaller projects, certainly not a, a school renovation or new construction, but small projects such as some of what you see on that recurring list. But I can tell you, without the without the, on that one time funding, as something like the pod classroom enclosure, we, we just we, we wouldn't get to it this year. We already, you know, we have plans for, for much of that funding already. We're doing some work with some interior door hardware in some schools. These schools were a little bit lower on that list, so we did, they just wouldn't get done this this year. Um, the projects that we submitted to you are ones that, that we know that we're not going to be able to hit this year. Yeah. Good question. I have a question. Um, since you embarrass me, <laughs> you embarrass me. Okay. We're the last, almost last on the totem pole for the, the uh, you know, the last, next to the last for the, oh, okay. Didn't you know, mean the, the scale you showed. Sure. Um, per pupil funding. Yeah, the, the, yeah, per pupil funding, yeah. We're the last on the almost next to last. Mm -hmm. But what does the state say about that? What's the report card on that? What's the state? They're they're only gonna. I mean, obviously, it's it's a challenge, and it's it's well known around the state. You know, because I have state meetings with other superintendents, and also with with our state board of education members and staff. But um, you know, that's why that maintenance of effort piece is there. Now, as long as the county continues to provide that by law the lowest amount possible by law that that they're allowed to provide there, there's really not much 
the, that they can say. I know one thing that has changed in maintenance of effort, and I think this gets back to your question, Mr. Cannon, is the uh, escalator that used to be in there, uh, you know, several years ago. That helped account for inflation a little bit. That was typically one or two percent, something like whatever, like that, whatever it happened to be at that point in time, and that would account for that. But when the blueprint legislation went into effect, that escalator went away, uh, and that over the, that's been the difference for us in Wicomico County over the last say three years. That's been such. Uh, such a challenge for us uh, that was not the challenge maybe in the past. Uh, now that those inflationary costs, whatever that is, maintenance of effort is exactly the same amount per pupil that it was the year before. There's no escalator in there. There's no additional funding formula you know, that, that may change that a little bit. It's the same amount. Uh, so the only reason that would go up or go down is because of our enrollment. It does not provide anything in additional funding to be able to account for, for the inflationary costs that we're seeing, to be able to just continue the same services that we did before. Yes, Josh. Oh, one comment, one question. Sure. I, I think well, most of you, what you've put forward, of course, is pretty straightforward. Um, I guess comment-wise, uh, you know, I. I um, I really appreciate what you're saying there. I, th I think that I think that's what I, uh, with regard to setting a plan for the county, whether that comes through the county executive or through the the council, to be able to have a commitment to say, oh, in the next five years we're going to reach this amount. And I, and I like how you've laid out the four million one hundred seven two hundred you know, one hundred seven thousand two hundred one. You know, whether that's the number or a different number, to, you know, doesn't really matter. But I think um, getting to uh, uh, to one specific number, because you look at these areas not funded by blueprint. I'm glad you put it in there twice, because I mean to have you know most of these kids trying to get them to stay. Uh, they only come to school for uh, athletics or extra extracurricular activities, and of course, that's not funded by blueprint. You know the um, arts and the music programs. That is another huge area. I mean I've heard it from my sister, my twin sister, who's a you know. A uh, long, long time educator, she has worked, you know, if she, if they didn't have those arts programs, a lot of those kids would, would be gone. Uh, so, and I'm a music guy myself. Uh, but like, these are really important areas and a lot not funded by Blueprint. So I think it'd be great. I don't know who wants to make the decision on that or the commitment, but for the county to say, hey, we want to get to 6 million over seven years or 5 million or whatever it might be, I think that's important as opposed to this just annual piece by piece. Um, looking at budget. That's, that's uh, what we're asking. Uh, the only question I had was just, uh, I know I've asked you uh, before, and I always have people ask me, and I have terrible memory because I know what's going on, but I guess the question of I see the, the the electricity costs, you know, I know that's always going up, and that's an issue there. I know I've asked before about renewable energy, trying to put panels out on, you know, on new schools or those kind of things. I know that there's an answer to that, and I don't remember what it was, but um, what is the latest for that? Sure, so, so we do have solar arrays at a couple of facilities, Northwestern Elementary behind Mardella and at James M. Bennett. We have two grants in now with the Maryland Energy Administration, both targeted on renewable energy. Uh, it is potentially, we're looking at with Fruitland Primary at going net zero, net zero ready. Uh, one of the grants would, de would uh, enable us to reach that goal. We have another grant to look at um, uh, how we might be able to add solar panels to existing schools as well. So it is something that's in mind. It's, as you know, it's, it's not cheap to go. The initial investment, the capital investment is pretty heavy. So there are some strategies, uh, owner, um, building owner owned solar panels or, or PPAs. Uh, we may be able to do that. I'd love to see that as a policy going forward, that any new building we're putting up or any new facility, that that stays as a critical component. The state's definitely heading that direction. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Jeff? Two. Um, age old question. Yes. SROs. Mm -hmm. So SROs, again, appreciate the amount over maintenance of effort uh, for that last year. Still looking for the Sheriff's Department to be able to bring on new recruits to fill those positions. In the meantime, uh, starting in the fall, we're going to be um, bringing in our own um, campus patrol style positions uh, to, to do that at least uh, for a period of time until such that the sheriff's department can recruit the number of deputies that we'd like to see uh, for those five additional positions. So we'll be, we've utilized that salary money this year kind of as one-time funding to be able to put in some security um, 
areas, uh, and, you know, for for uh, things that we've uh, looked at regarding security cameras, weapon detection systems, fencing, that kind of thing. Uh, and then next year we'll uh, start to bring in our own staff at this point in time to fill those positions. We have yep. SROs in 10 schools? Yes. Is that right? So <clears throat> one more question with, with this graph. Yes. Um, the four million is not going to move us on this, is it? No, it, it's not going to move us up to to this third from the bottom. But it's going to, I think, like we said, and, and Josh said, I think if we if we get a plan together, and then we're certainly willing to work with county executive, work with county council. And where do we want to be? Because year by year, we're not we're not going to get there. But where do we want to be? What's this county's vision for supporting education in the district? And and we're we're down there, not due to anyone sitting in this room. We had those two. Uh, cuts in in 2011, 2012, 14 million dollar cuts um, to the county's allocation to the school system, and certainly we had five years going above maintenance of effort, and that helps chip away. But mm -hmm. uh, going above maintenance of effort is it's a it's the way business business is done in a lot of districts. It's not an every year um, kind of going and, and making that case. Uh, you know, one of our counties in Maryland has 200 million dollars over maintenance of effort <laughs> last year, uh, which is <laughs> it's huge. Uh, is that Montgomery? We're not. We're not. It is yeah. Montgomery. And it's does it start with an M? It does. <laughs> considering they have a two billion dollar yeah, budget. Say, yeah. mm -hmm. So we're not asking for that. Uh, but it is just to make a point. There are 16 counties that were above MOE last year. Many of those counties, it's a, it's an annual thing. They're, they're consistently. They have that plan. They know that they want to get someplace, and they're, they're chipping away at it each year. And uh, we'd certainly relish the opportunity to develop a plan and work on that with, with county government. And I know that um, with Blueprint, that's going to shift a little bit of the cost, as, you, as I know you're aware of, back to the local governments. But that cost is that cost. So if there's a bridge in the meantime to get us closer to whatever that cost will eventually be, it only makes sense to try to work that way until it just all of a sudden happens. Um, and I'm, and again, that's you know we're hearing that blueprint legislation is going to be extended out several years and you know delayed in the implementation and all of that. So um, there are a lot of ifs in in that, but I also know that anything above maintenance of effort at this point would only serve as a bridge to to what may be to come down the road. These officers that you're um, going to hire or patrol are they are they sworn officers? No. So what will their function be? They'll be there to provide security uh, for staff and students, uh, check uh, the exterior of the, of the um, campus, the interior, doors, uh, help provide escorts uh, to and from you know, the office uh, for students and, and that type of thing. They'll be also trained. Uh, uh, not as school resource officers, but also in uh, de-escalation techniques and other other things that uh, we'll be able to assist with student discipline. Will they be uniformed? Uh, not not necessarily. No, they may have some type of um, shirt or something that indicates who they are, but not not a, again not a uniformed officer or carrying a weapon or anything like that. Will they be physically able to do de-escalation de if there's a problem? I think that would be a part of what their role would be, mm -hmm. yes. Their requirement? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Is that, I mean, do you have an estimate of what that's going to cost? I do not. Okay. Um, probably somewhere, um, you know, a little bit more than what we would pay a, an instructional assistant to assist teachers in the classroom and probably a little bit less than what a school resource officer would cost. They're going to be basically yeah. like a hall monitor. Uh, hall like monitor. a trained, I would say, campus patrol. They would have very specific duties and responsibilities of mm -hmm. how they could help staff, students, and also be a part of administration and be also in contact with the law enforcement officers around the county that we do have. Yep. That's great. That's good. That's I think as far as where, to Josh's point, I think uh, as far as where we want to be is not next to last. Right? We, would we would agree. Yeah. Yeah. We're not last. Yeah, we're not last. That's, <laughs> that's the good part, but yeah. Yeah. there's yeah. a whole lot of ground in front of us. Yeah. Anybody else? Uh, Andy? Something about the COVID money expired, and for some of these expenses, you were going to have to dip into your general fund. 
And so I was wondering if you know what your current unrestricted general fund amount is. For the current year or for the next year? Yeah, it, you said that you'd be dipping into that general fund. So if you just offhand knew what that it's, amount was. It's basically just part of the new revenue that we're receiving. We're, we're having to put that towards the computer lease because we're now one to one. So our, our technology expenses have gone up. Um, so basically, I think our revenue went up by about $5 million over last year. So we're using basically the 4.1, unless we are able to get above maintenance of effort to cover uh, those expenses. <clears throat> I appreciate you. Thank you very much, John. Tom. John, yeah. You need a mic, John. Up a chair. <laughs> Ms. Shields, you mentioned something earlier about what does the state say? Yes. The state, say, the state always says pay for it. The cost is always going to come down to the county and you people who appropriate the money. If you remember Thornton Commission, I was there at the very beginning of that one. Kerwin Commission, no child left behind, race to the top. Now we had the blueprint. If you look at the final results of these, the scores didn't go up. So where did the money go? And you better believe blueprint is going to be passed down to us. So we might as well uh, plan for it in the future. I, for one, would like to somehow see this chart here where you get to the very end where it's going down. I would like to see what it's going to take to make that chart start going in the other direction. Not only for the kids, but I tell you what, you know, normally on a chart, it'll flow from low to high. And if you turn it upside down, it, it'll look better. This chart here, no matter which way you turn it, it looks bad for the county. Yeah. And this is not good advertising. We want businesses to come here. We want families to come here. We're getting families to come here, but we're not getting the businesses that we need. So... Somehow, we need to put a figure on this and how we're going to get to it. Thank you. Well said. Thank you. No questions. No. All right. Well, thank, thank, you thank you very all. much. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Thank you all. Thank you. So you have in, um, in in this rundown here. In the rundown here, we talked about the fire, Salisbury fire. We talked about the cap salaries, and we appreciate your input on that one, Pam. Um, We have uh, benefit salary changes approximate, which is about 143,666, which I think uh, we know we need to adjust that number as well. Uh, there was concern in regard to the executive office, the promotion in the new position. Um, if we were to remove that, that would be about $62,000. Uh, community pro promotions, uh, there's $14,000 that we would cut there. It's not a big amount, but you know they already have 
there were two separate budget there were two separate budget items we know one was dues and subscriptions and then there was just a 14,000 I think the, there's enough flexibility in the dues and subscriptions that it ought to work out without the additional 14 for the uh, for the um, promotions category there so again mm -hmm. um, are you is that just for my department, or is that across the? That's just for community. There's a community, community promotion promotions, right? Line item. Yeah, okay, so the, is, uh, department six. Yes, is what you're talking about yeah. on community promotions. Right. Um, and civic center elevator and civic center flooring. Uh, just concerned about that, and the, the real idea is hopefully maybe to um, to try to um, move that into next year instead of this year, specifically because it's PEGO, and um, we're trying to see what we can do to get enough. Uh, revenue re restored so that we can get the uh, revenue cap back to where it's uh, revenue cap back to where it's supposed to be which we anticipate is probably a 2.1 about 2.1 million I will tell million. you if you take that number down we also have to reduce our billing rate for personal property because we are currently at a personal pro uh, state mandates personal property cannot be more than Two and a half percent, two and a half times real property. We keep lowering our real property tax rate. We are now, if you take down the tax rate, we will have to take down the real property or the personal property tax rate to two dollars and eleven cents. And we, uh, two point one one seven, would be the number that we would have to take it down to. And we would not be able, we would also then have to lower our revenue projections for um, uh, those line items. Okay. So um, be anything basically below the number that we are proposed, that has been proposed, mm -hmm. means that um, revenue projection has to come down for personal property. Okay, that's good to know too, right? Um, if you if, if you could help us with if you if you can figure out what that number is good we don't need it today, but if you would do that that would be a big help. Um, but again, so we're trying to see what we can to restore that because you know, Wicomico County hasn't had to hasn't had to touch the revenue cap in in 18 years. Well, and everything though that was discussed just previously, <laughs> they're the only ones that we can break revenue cap for. I understand. And the Two percent, as you see, taking it down two million dollars is is um, impacting multiple things. We are still below last year's tax rate, and the other pieces is that with that, um, a two percent revenue cap means that we have two percent to spend on every department. It doesn't matter what inflation is across the world. They're asking for $4 million above maintenance of effort. $2 million here is not even getting us to <coughs> that $4 million. So I don't believe we will be able to do a long-term plan for building that number with all the other needs that we have in this county without looking at revenue cap. I am saying that as your finance director because 2% is not enough to cover all the needs when you talk public safety, when you talk roads, when you talk school system, 2% um, does not get you there. Now, are you still basing that on borrowing the 20 million? So. I highly recommend you do not propose, based on the numbers that I have shown you, we will take our number down if we use fund balance for Fruitland Primary. We will take our number down to the bare minimum that is recommended for a county our size. Yeah. And, and, addition let me, yeah. and, and additionally, that bare minimum number will then be reflected to our rating agencies. So the next time we go to borrow, the years that it took us to build that number, yes, we made some specific decisions this year to spend because of some statements that were made. But they never said spend down to your minimum. 
Are that, you at all concerned? Like, just I just really want to talk to you all. Are you really okay with that? When Pam gave you those projections, um, that number that Ashley sat here and gave you was at $73 million at the end of fiscal 23. We've spent money with your permission. You know, we bought the Verizon building. We, you just bought the CAC last night. We spent $4 million on the roof at the Civic Center. So a million dollars at Alpha Road. So we have spent money down. So I just... I can't understand why you would want our account to go to $33 million from 73. I just, I just, I'm really concerned about that. And like, I mean, Joe, you're one of the most cons like fiscally conservative people I know. Are you really okay with that? You know what the I'm okay is. with it, and I'm not okay with buying the CI, the the building last night. I, you know what the interest I, is a year. You know, you money. brought that building for it. So you know, I did, but the purse strings are here. Um, people voted It'll be for between it. four and five. But are you okay here. with busting the finished. revenue cap? I mean, you ran as a conservative, too. Mm -hmm. I remember you standing at the Republican Club. Yep. You know, and I remember James being there. Oh, we're all these conservatives. Mm -hmm. You know, this revenue cap, you know, voted in by the people. Yep. You know, but, but you're the revenue cap. But, but it says that you can break it for. I, no. This is the, for education. Norm Conway, Norm Conway took it to the state mm -hmm. and got that approved. Mm -hmm. The citizens of this county didn't say we could bust the revenue cap. Right. The delegation in, in Annapolis said we could uh, bust the revenue cap. Well, I also so ran on education. If you want to bust the revenue cap, if that's what you want on your table, if that's what you want in your history, mm -hmm. that's fine. Well, but at the end I'm of the day, I'm not fine the, with it. I, I, I understand, and believe me, it was one of the hardest things I had to decide. But I also ran on education. I taught in this county for 17 yeah. years. So I do believe in our education system, and I do think that when you believe in something, you do need to... Fund it, but I mean, but yeah. but that's neither here nor there. At the end of the day, the proposal is we still lowered the tax rate. Our tax rate is you, at eighty-seven cents. You called me out, but I remember Pam sitting at this table a few months ago and saying, "We don't need to borrow any more money." Mm -hmm. And so, I, that is know, why I, we know. originally proposed yeah. four million. That was it. That's what we proposed. Mm -hmm. We didn't. We did not propose to build Fruitland Primary. <laughs> I wanted Fruitland Primary in twenty-seven, but. Fruitland Primary wasn't at 27. There was nothing so, at 26, 27, 28, or 29. You are correct. And the way that Pam has done the CIP, which is probably d didn't look right, is the fact that she does not put all of those projects in for education because the number of the CIP would be astronomical. But that was our fault because we should have put it out in the public that 27 was what was the year for it. So but. I... The... The current rate that I would expect us going to market for the $20 million right now would be somewhere between four and a half and five. Which would be how much money a year? In interest? Well, um, $700,000 is the half year interest. Half but year. but well, I will tell you. <laughs> $1.4 million. But I will also tell you if we go. We don't have $27 million to go for next year. When we go to the market in 26 for the rest of Fruitland Primary, since that's now on the table, we have to go. We can't stop it. We have to go because it does not look right to, as they stated, stop the building. We've tried that other, you know, and the uproar, we, if we make the commitment this year to fund Fruitland Primary, we are committing that in 26 we're going to borrow because we certainly don't have $27 million worth of fund balance for next year. And when we go to the market, I highly expect them to say, hmm, you've now spent your fund balance down too far. And we really don't think your rating <coughs> is where is as good as it should be. So I would expect for each downgrade of our rating, we're talking a quarter to a half a percent. So if they downgrade us one, we might go uh, up to five and a half, six. If they downgrade us two, they would, uh, we could be a full point higher than what Depends we current. where the interest rates are. Correct. Right. But the current interest rates, if, if all else is equal, I can't predict that. But if all else is equal, we would be between five and a half and six and a half versus borrowing right now between four and a half and five and a half. And I, we have worked so hard to get our rating up to take us down to $33 million, the bare minimum that our auditor says that the um, 
world wants to see us have the bare minimum. They, I think they said 38 was the absolute top of where they recommended for a healthy balance. Uh, comparatively, they said that would come out. So we were, I remember we were double what the PKS said we should be. But we did some very specific things this year to bring that number down. And that is something the rating agencies are actually um, said, okay, great, you've built this healthy fund balance, now use it. Well, we did. But they didn't say take us down to 33. I highly, highly recommend that we do not use our fund balance to do Fruitland Primary. We borrow the funds, and in a couple years, if the interest rate goes down, which we have done, you, you did it three years ago, we refunded bonds and got a great interest rate on those refunding bonds and borrowed at a lower interest rate. This taking it down to $33 million, $33, $35 million scares me a lot for the financial health because then we don't have <coughs> any flexibility that if something comes up, if we have to make a, a major repair on something, if we have a perfect opportunity like we got presented this year with the Verizon building, we don't have that flexibility. Why couldn't we borrow it then? Because the, well, because the process to borrow money with this county takes six months, minimum. I am recommending that we do the bond legislation, the first reading of that bond legislation, the second meeting in June. We then have to do the second reading, which then would be the second meeting in July. Then we have to wait 60 days for the referendum period. Then we have to go to uh, Wall Street. And then we have to d issue the resolution. And then we have to actually have them do our bid. And then council has to accept that bid. And then we have two more weeks till closing. It is a five to six month process to borrow funds. We can't borrow funds in an emergency. We don't have that ability as, as a county that is not the way our charter is set up. We well, have the ability. Have 33 million in the account. <laughs> and really, really harm our position in the market if we take it below that. Really harm our position. I am imploring you as a council that you take the advice of your, I have talked to Davenport, who is our financial advisor. And as your finance director with 30 years <coughs> of finance, finance and accounting experience, don't pay go Fruitland Primary. Let it stay borrowing. I, uh, I'm just going to point this out. We've had the entire delegation come in here and say, be wary of the future because, you know, we've got a spend happy uh, government right now in our in our in our state and uh, that's something that I think uh, I don't know why we didn't take that warning um, but I mean we're getting it from our finance director um, I the, I like you know I, I support education but I, I think what would what would the entertainment be of the interest you said we'd be paying is Seven hundred thousand, around there, about for six months, for right? Six months. Now, what would the entertainment be to to raise the MOE up and just postpone the building for a year and a half or so? It'll be a year and a half. One point, what eight on the building? Okay, so we're going to spend one point four in interest, and we're going to be putting our county at risk. Very extreme risk. I mean, I was just last year, you were telling me that you didn't want to be a part of the county council that could cause us to go broke. And look, I mean, we're getting ready to put ourselves at $33 million. That's the pinnacle point of we messed up. I, I don't want to be a part of a, of a council that's making that decision. Um, I, I am comfortable that we can pay the debt service. 
I didn't recommend that we enter that at this point in time. I am comfortable we can do it. It does mean that future, you know, when we're looking at 26, about probably the only thing we would borrow in 26 would be Fruitland Primary again. So, you know, when we submitted the CIP, we had other things in there. Right. Uh, um, <coughs> but I, I'm sorry, I did interrupt you. Yes. So we have to have a goal to get them up above NOE at least. So I don't see why we can't pause on the building. They need a building. I, we all know that. But it's operational when it works. And we have to make a decision. It's either we, we fund them fully and we risk the county at $33 million and we need $38 million to stay at that six month mark to stay uh, funded for six months. Or we uh, say, hold on guys, we'll, we'll fund you guys, but let's get this MOE up, maintenance of effort, we'll save the money and collect it in interest and we'll pay them, we can bump their MOE up, I don't know, 500,000, 800,000, whatever we decide. But uh, you know, we're, we'll, we'll, we'll be better off in the long term, uh, what I see, and, Josh, and that's just that's going to have to be a group decision. Josh, do you remember the figure of what it was that they said was a good savings? Do you remember the window? Yeah, it was the so the it went up to a, a thirty-eight thousand or thirty-eight million. So double that is where I remember thinking we were. So up to thirty-eight million was they said thirty-eight million was the the high end of where what is a healthy be. balance for yeah. having reserved. And where were we? We were at seventy some, right? Yeah. Now we're now down to fifty-three. Yeah, I'd like to get an itemization and, and, and just to help me on this eleven four seventeen, the, the estimated use of fund balance for fit for twenty five. That's the cap. That is the capital budget. So yeah, I just don't have. I like I said, I lost all my stuff. I don't have it. So we were at seventy and we're down to fifty three. And I know we bought the Verizon building. That includes buying the Verizon building. That includes all of the things that we have done this year. Okay. What else? What else? We did four million dollars for the roof at the Civic Center. That it's all on that list. I have it in here, but I don't have my notes. Oh. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. No, okay. Okay. So it's no. all on that list that right. you just got today. Chuck, get a question. So <laughs> that sheet of paper that you were handed today literally spells out. How we oh, got okay. there. Oh, okay. I see it. I got it. Okay. So it literally spells out we mm -hmm. did the Verizon building, we did the <coughs> Civic Center roof, we did the roads at, uh, we did Athol Road, we did marina fixes, we did West Side HVAC, yeah. we just did the CAC. Yeah. If. See, see again, how easy it is, guys, to spend it a little bit at a time? It so, all comes through the year. Again, and you say, okay, now, let's spend it. A, a, a couple of these things that you are proposing. Would reduce the eleven million four seventeen. You would reduce the eleven million four seventeen by the two hundred and fifty thousand dollars for the elevator, the three hundred and fifty thousand dollars for the civic center flooring, um, the five hundred thousand dollars for the airport parking lot, and then the correction building expansion. My answer to that is it's either all or nothing. Yeah, I don't think we can do that. And then, and then you didn't you don't have on here about the um, CA. The CAC is the one million four hundred. Yeah, you don't have that on here. Right? Yes, it, I do. It's the additional purchase for fiscal yeah. twenty four. Oh, okay. Because when I, I created okay. this, all right, midway down. Yeah, it was, yeah, yeah, it was still in. It was still session. in closed session, and so when I That's handed fine. this out, the last well, time. you didn't have the letters beside it. I'm fine. I'm yeah. fine. Yeah. But, but to, I don't think my question ever got answered. If we were, even and that's Charles, Charles was going to answer that question. Yeah. Charles Schmeckel, I'm the deputy director of finance, and just to clarify the uh, comments by the councilman from District Four. Um, the theory that PKS has described is, comes from the GFOA, and they suggest at least two to four months of savings. We're currently burning through, I believe the figure is about 12 to 13 million a month, according to Ms. Stern. Um, so very minimum, bare minimum, would be 26 million. We would <coughs> much prefer, you know, closer to the four months, if not six months. Yeah. Um, I have to tell you, I do enjoy being able to come into work every day and seeing a bank balance that I know that I'm going to be able to make payroll in two weeks. I'm going to be able to pay the vendors. And I can do that at the current levels that we have. And in fact, we're bringing in a lot of money and interest. If we start throwing that away, you know, it's not just the interest, it's not just the opportunity cost of the interest that we pay for the school, but we're also losing interest 
that we're now depending upon for our revenues. So we took, that would go down. We took this budget into consideration when we projected our interest income number for this budget. So we, we took into consideration the spend down of our fund balance. But if I did not take into consideration the concept of taking this down to $33 million and not having <coughs> those funds available to us to earn interest. Well, you know, like we get, go ahead, I'm sorry. We get different messages. One time. Thanks, Charles. Now, I've been here a long time. Thanks. So I hear, you know, we've got too much fund balance. We need to spend it down. Now we're hearing you don't want too much fund balance. <laughs> you know, well, so we keep hearing we get different medium. messages. There's I know a, there's a healthy medium. medium, and, and you know, so. And you're my recommendation 30. is that happy meeting medium is around the fifty-three million dollar number, and not taking it down to thirty-three. That is my recommendation as your conservative CPA finance director who thinks is thinking about the interest income that we will have coming in, our bond rating and the impact it will have on us in associated with all of those things. Because if we don't maintain, yes, they told us to spend, and they will never tell us an exact dollar amount to spend. We have accomplished that. We have made some strategic decisions this year to do that. And again, if we make the decision, there'll be some, minor adjustments associated, there'll be some adjustments associated with $11.4 million. So, you know, maybe we'll be closer to $54 million versus 53. I like that number a whole lot more for our financial stability as a county than I like the idea of taking our fund balance down to $33 million. Because what will happen in this next, bud in, in this next audit if we pass a budget that requires us to spend $20 million worth of PAYGO, it will show up in a separate line item and not show up as unassigned. Our unassigned fund balance will literally drop to the $33, $35 million number. I have a question. I, go ahead, Shane. I have a question. Um, what is, what, number one, how do you think we get the, get the school? I think, you get the, I think you get the school by borrowing the money for the next two years. If that is, if the goal of this council is to fund the school, my only way of funding that school is borrowing the money over the next two years. Okay. Only and, way. And the next question is, if we postpone um, billing of this school, what would be the cost? What, that is, you know, that the is materials. A hard, that, that's the a hard. I mean, that's going to depend <coughs> on the economy. Yes, it is. It is not. Everything. It is not something that the board of education wanted. That is the decision that administration made when we did the CIP because we said we don't think this is um, financially feasible at this point in time. Because again, we also don't have debt dropping off the books this year. So. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Well, Thanks, I Charles. So. <laughs> so we, part of the reason why we said we didn't want to borrow a significant amount of money this year is because we don't have debt dropping off the books because of the timing of borrowings 10, 15, 20 years ago. Now, can we afford it with our debt limit and our uh, P&I policy and did we make it work in this budget? Yes. Can we make next year work? Yes. Well, we have to reevaluate when we come to council next year in our in December when we submit the CIP as to what other borrowings we might be able to do. Yes. All of those things will have to be considered. But if council wants to get this building and keep it on track, the only way to do that in my opinion is to borrow the money. We have to start the process the second meeting of June because otherwise the timeline gets pushed back. Each meeting that we push this back, it gets pushed back on another two to four weeks. Their cash flow needs change if we push it back. I, we built this budget with the idea that they need $500,000 in PAYGO 
to get them through the borrowing period and have the funding available in November. That is how this budget was built. Again, I do not recommend, absolutely do not recommend taking $20 million out of PAYCO. Where would, we fit, where would it fit in the CIP? Where would it fit, where would the school, because it wasn't there at all, so where would you put it? Well, it's that, it is now, it's now. What year, 27? 20, 27 would be the year that I, Originally, but again, I think that ship has sailed. Yeah, I don't think we can do I think I, that maybe the Board of Education could help us. I don't know if Jesse could, but I know that in conversations we've had, the state of Maryland is going to escalate their costs phenomenally into the next year so or So again, I, I am yes. I'm now past yes. the concept yes. of, I'm now past the concept of us not funding it. Right. I am arguing the I'll most fund. financially prudent <laughs> way to fund it is to borrow it. Here, here's the downside. Let me say this right quick. Here's the downside to borrowing the money. Now think about this, because here's what we've done. She's laid out a list of what we've done in the past year. Look at what we've spent in the past year. We don't borrow this money. I mean, if we borrow this money, it's going to leave us $53 million in our fund balance, and right? We spent. And, and, and let me finish. We're going to hear next month, two months, six months from now. Oh, well, we've got $53 million in our fund balance. We've got plenty of money. I have never once come to you with something that I don't think is financially feasible, ever. And so I would only, again, you have that ability to say no if we came to you. I am not, rec I am not recommending us take it down much more than 50 to the 50, much more than the $53 million. Yes, if there is a perfect opportunity for this council to be able to buy the Taj Mahal at a reasonable price, okay. But that's not, we have done a lot this fiscal year to take care of some very significant needs of this county. And I will, since um, Dr. Stoffer is standing, I will yield the floor to him at this moment. Thank you, Dr. Stauffer. Hi. Good afternoon again, Micah Stauffer, <laughs> Superintendent of Schools. I would just say to answer your question, I believe, um, Mr. Cannon, possibly Mr. Merritt, um, without Mrs. Ashby here, who could produce the exact uh, month and time, here she comes. <laughs> I will say so that she can you. expand on what I say. But money has already been spent, and there is a timeline on those designs. Okay, and she can she can explain what that timeline is. Also, waiting uh, a longer period of time, as you said, would be an escalation in unknown cost, whatever that inflationary amount is. And then third, knowing that the state sees whatever it may be, but the state sees the county revenue continuing to increase, which that tells them that the county wealth is continuing to increase, which means that the cost share split. Currently, we're at a certain percentage where the state pays almost all of the construction costs, and then the county does more of the soft costs, the planning and design and the phasing and all of that. That cost share over time, we see that changing where the state's going to um, you know, uh, spend less on the construction costs and more of that costs would go towards the county. So waiting certainly makes it more expensive and does have an escalation in costs in those three ways. So no, knowing, um, knowing this is a tough question to ask you and it's going to be tough to answer, what would you rather have, over maintenance of effort or a new school? I thought you would probably, someone would probably <laughs> ask me that. Um, I, I would say with our current needs, that's you know yeah, I know it's tough it's very tough because we're currently the the amount of time that we're spending between projects is still a long period of time which means pushing off Fruitland primary pushes off Y middle and so forth and so on and we're we're only at this point in time about three or four years between projects with 24 schools and you've heard me give that analogy many times and multiply that out that's way too long of a time span to be able to maintain all of those schools at the ages that they are. 
At the same time, I know that we had 350 more English language learners just this year. That's a whole small elementary school. I know what our needs are for special education. So I would say the immediate need knocking at our door is probably above maintenance of effort because that's going to have the most impact right away for the things that we can do to address school climate, student discipline, special education, and our, and our multilingual learners. While at the same time, I would implore you that we still have got to stay somehow on track with these capital projects because the time is just too long between those projects to be able to maintain all of the buildings and facilities that we have. Well, I appreciate, I appreciate Please, you yes. answering that question yes. because there's some people that wouldn't. Lisa, do you have any more? Uh, do you have any, can you expand on that a little bit? Because uh, I think you know pretty much what the exact numbers would, would if, be. If you want specifics. So, mm -hmm. um, and again, if we know what numbers we're working with, we can adjust accordingly. Um, our current uh, state cost share split is 98%. That will reduce July 1st down to 95%. Um, the state in the following fiscal year will be redetermining how that calculation will be done. We don't know where that will fall, but I'm sure the county's wealth will be a component by which they determine what that cost share is going, going to be. Um, as far as construction, you guys have seen it on some of your own projects. Costs will continue to most likely rise. Supply chain issues are still sort of sometimes an issue. Electrical gear is still a nightmare. Um, I have never been in a position where the cost of something has gone down um, over, over time. Um, we do work to structure our budgets to have a certain amount of escalation built into them so that we do have a cushion of if we hit a small, you know, uh, snafu, so to speak. Um, designs do have a shelf life. You don't want them to sit for more than a year and a half to two years because codes change every three years mm -hmm. um, to... Uh, Mr. Hastings' earlier comment, the state, you know, probably next year in legislation, there will be a complete elimination of fossil fuels. That's going to impact the design of the buildings, most likely push it all electric, potentially raise the cost. Um, net zero is on the horizon um, quite significantly. We have to meet the high performance building standards. We have to pay prevailing wage. We have to meet, you know, minority business enterprise. Um, as those things are layered on, they obviously bring, they tend to bring costs with it as well. So I can't stand here and say it's gonna be less, um, but those are the numbers that we're working to and constantly adjusting each year when we prepare the capital plan. All right, thank you okay. very much. So, so re real quick, the, the cost share, looks like we're losing about 3% in July. Yes, and um, what I'll say is it's it's eligible construction costs. So I don't recall the exact percentage. It's a little less than 60-40 right now for the Fruitland Primary School. And part of that is because we, um, instruction is trying to build additional pre-K capacity to help address blueprint in there. That additional pre-K capacity above and beyond what the state believes the size of that building should be is on the local side and side of things. Okay, thanks. 3% is not bad, but when you're talking $40 million, that's... Yeah, it gets, it gets yeah. up there. Yeah, uh, thank you very mm -hmm. much. Yeah, uh, in looking at the capital, I don't, have, I don't have an exact number, of it, but what I noticed throughout the time when we were reviewing is that we are spending a lot in recreation parks. We're spending a fortune of PAYGO in recreation and parks and Civic Center. I felt like we were really possibly overdoing it. Of course, you know, I, I have a lot of respect for Steve Miller, and he's got such good vision that you don't try. You don't want to really try to encumber that, but that is a huge number of what's in, involved in PAYGO. So um, we have also postponed forever mm -hmm. part of the reason why the yeah. roof became what it was. Yeah, yeah. And we have, we have a facility there mm -hmm. that has one elevator. Take that into account that we have one elevator to get anything to that second and third floor of that building, which means if that goes down, anyone who has the inability to go up an escalator cannot get to our second floor. Right, and that's why I wouldn't want to delay it more than a year, but, you know, we have, we have expenses such as... We've so, I, I, I just... May, I'm sorry, I'll let you finish. I was going to say, and we have projects, and I don't want to... I'm not suggesting we cut these, but I'm just... <coughs> 
for example, you know, we have Pirates Wharf, we have Cedar Hills, we have Mason Dixon, we, well, have, a lot of we those, have Cove Road. We have a lot of parks. So we're, we're putting a ton of money into these right now. A lot, a lot of, a lot of the. Um, I know you. So Cove, out Cove Road, Dixon. yes, we have five hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. That is ours, but we also are getting one hundred forty-five thousand dollars in grant that right. that helps offset. Mm -hmm. um, Pirates Wharf again. That nine hundred thousand dollars then helps us get six hundred thousand dollars worth of grants. Mm -hmm. um, now, again, Pirates Wharf. That is the next phase of of making that park um, a a um, premier cut. facility. Yes. Um, I will say, I uh, having started as you know at Rec and Parks. An elevator and escalator upgrade has been on the CIP every year that I have been with the county and I am finishing year 11. So, you know, again, can we postpone it? Yes. Have we had the elevator go down at times? Yes, mm -hmm. we have. And people, um, we have to figure, you know, we have to reroute people, we have to make adjustments. Now, we are lucky, or I, I don't know if they would consider it lucky, but we don't have any real rooms up on the second floor that, you know, when we're, we're doing a banquet or that kind of stuff. But if we're having a big event and you're having a graduation and you have somebody who's in a wheelchair, the only way they're getting to the second floor is through an elevator. And we right now take, as I said, everything. Can we accept moving that to the next year? Yes, mm -hmm. it's been postponed before. It can be postponed again. Um, can we accept um, moving the Civic Center flooring or reduce, uh, or, you know, putting, right. you know, flooring? Yes. Right. Um, and we're not we're not fans of any cuts at all, but we're just trying to see where we feel like we, we have again wiggle room um, on the. Building expansion for corrections. My my answer to that is either you cut two point seven million dollars, or you cut, um, or you don't cut anything, mm -hmm. because you're not going to accomplish the project. It is not. Um, there's not a, a a clean break at one point seven million or at one million dollars. There's a clean break at two point seven and two point seven because the, the space sizes and the needs are about the same, but there is not a clean break at a million. What was your impression when they went from one point eight to five point four? I mean that 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 is huge. It is yeah. huge. Um, again, we. Um, that number actually, we took it down from 5.9 to 5.4 based on some additional information that we did, you know, elicit from them, and we took down some of the escalation costs that were built in for the fact that we were facing it. Mm -hmm. um, so again, the original number that they proposed to us was 5.9. We took it down to 5.4, and we split it over two years. Yeah. Again, is it is it a need? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is it, you know... That was the question, too. This is something that we could maybe put into next year. And I don't like kicking the can down the road, but I'm just trying to find some room to make it, things happen. Um, again, like everything, there are trade-offs associated with not having it. Again, they, this first phase is r literally the isolation thing. Now, I can't answer the question. I can go back to um, Chris and go... If this was, if this gets accomplished, your question, Joe, about having to have every block open, would that be able to be potentially reduced? I can't answer that. I don't manage a, a correctional facility, but because of you know separation right now, where they're talking about having isolation rooms and that kind of stuff, could that possibly accomplish some of it? <coughs> Maybe. And please take that as a very strong maybe because I don't do, you know, correctional facilities. I can answer a lot of questions about rec parks and tourism. I can't answer about correctional facilities. No, I, I do believe they said that the leaving it as a million wasn't going to solve the problem. They'd have to do the whole two point seven. Yeah, it needs to either be one or the other. Yeah, but well, we can we can look at just. Really so, um, on the um, airport parking lot canopy. Right. Um, no. We um, we brought that number down in looking in getting some further quotes since the CIP was presented. 
the intention of that is that we do get complaints about in a rain event somebody trying to get out of that facility without having any kind of cover over the um right. and tickets unlike wet and jammed <laughs> yeah the, machine. the tickets get wet they jam the machine additionally it is adding a second lane to it because as you know we only have a you know a couple times a day when people are trying to exit mm -hmm. so there is a line those couple times a day could we just do the canopy that's one of the things we looked at was just doing the canopy that's how kind of we reduce the number by not expanding to a second lane but the canopy is intended to try to alleviate the concerns when we're having a rain event or a snow event and somebody's trying to get their ticket and get their the arm up because they have paid they could either pay inside or um, pay out there um, <clears throat> to allow traffic to continue to flow okay that is what that one is intended. Ha have we had it? No. It, would it be something, it, is it a want? Yes. Right. Is it an absolute need this year? Maybe not. It rains. And we've made, we've made quite a bit of investments in the airports. You know, we've, we really have. So again, yeah. um, well, and nothing there is cheap ever. Yeah, right. nothing. No, I've never <laughs> so, um, uh, get, on going back up to the conversation that we had previously, I would like council to reconsider on the correctional officers and the emergency services to not take them down to 5% to um, make sure that those um, amounts are maintained to allow for um, the new wage scale to take effect and to also continue to uh, recruit for emergency services. Right. And, and um, Angie's got that, so she can certainly review that. Um, and we recognize what you're saying also when you were talking about the, um, um, the revenue cap and the property taxes. We get that as well. Yeah, I will get um, you a number on that um, tomorrow or Friday. That'd be great. Uh, we also have, we want to try to restore funding for the volunteer fire and the ambulance. Uh, there's a number there on eight on eight, of, of eight twenty five, which is seventy five thousand, uh, which is literally what I proposed yesterday. Yeah, but we didn't want to do it in a. I, I, I didn't, yeah, we just didn't want to do it in, in a capital fund. We'd rather maybe do it. I'm not a real fan of stipends to begin with. I like pay mm -hmm. for service, but that's not what we do. So, so. just out of curiosity, because I had a couple questions. I know I missed the original uh, or the beginning conversation. So. We proposed $75,000 per fire department. Um, we just did it as capital, but my question is, um, if this is going to be the new floor, mm -hmm. you know, an extra right. 75,000, right. um, you are going to get SWOT analysis information in the next month or two. Right. So j just, I, I just wanted. I, what, I would, what I would need to know is whether or not you're putting it evenly split, you know, evenly split between ambulance and fire is it going to the ems grant is that's it going a good question we kind of decided we'd, we'd sort of try and, and however you want to do it but we kind of saw, thought we'd follow the same um percentages that, that were in the budget from last year okay but it you know it's so your discretion for capital it wouldn't go to fire i mean to ambulance it would go well we're not well, saying I, again capital. it could go to ambulance if it was as long as it wasn't the what i had told them was i said when you for this seventy five thousand that i was proposing just don't pay your ems staff don't pay your electric bill if there's anything you need for the fire if you wanted to go towards renovations if you wanted it to go towards a fire truck if you wanted it to go towards you know uniform really anything why were you taking it out of um why were you contingency contingency rather than putting you know putting it in the budget in their budget right so because we had extra money so contingency right now we're sitting at 1.3 million that's left over in contingency i wanted to get them the money tomorrow so if it was approved last night we would have been able to cut a check to the fire and not have to wait till july 1st and have it go to specific mm -hmm. things it, i mean it's it's you know so, so one half, it, half dozen so, other, so on the volunteer fire <clears throat> side i would not i mean there are three lines on the volunteer fire side there's workers comp there's an operating grant and there's an emt grant um on the volunteer fire side there is workers comp an operating grant um and uh, a county match grant um i could i could pick one um 
I would not pick it in uh, workers' comp because some of the departments actually, so on the workers' comp, just so you're aware, and the reason why that number does not <coughs> always reflect it, you know, the spend number, if you see in here, is not, all, is not the budget on that one. They have to submit what they pay for workers' comp. Mm -hmm. So we allocate a specific maximum dollar amount per department, and then they have to show us their bill and that they paid it. And then we will reimburse them for that. So I wouldn't recommend at this moment actually upping the workers' comp because there are some departments that don't utilize that number in full. And so if we're putting money in that line item, there's going to be some departments who aren't going to get any of it. So my recommendation, it would be in your operating grants and or your EMT grant because of the fact that you want them to get the full amount, not only the amount that they have to spend. Yeah, and the reason, uh, uh, just one more second. Confused. Hang on a second. Oh. Yeah, just one second. So um, the other reason um, that I had proposed it the way that I did is because I didn't feel comfortable or, com well, I just, I don't, comfortable is not the right word. I didn't know how the council would feel about upping our fire department's $75,000 and still, and still have not received SWAT. Not saying they don't deserve it. I wish I could give them a million dollars. But I didn't know how you all felt because there was a lot of discussion when we were talking about Salisbury when uh, Andy was here and Jack was here um, about not having enough data, not having the SWAT. So that is why we did things the way that we did. But either way, I'm happy that they're getting it. So that's fine. Sorry, and Jane, it's, what were it's, you saying? It's variable. I mean, it, we, we've, we've budgeted in there for 75 for each, but we could you could make it 65. It depends on what you feel comfortable with. Yeah, no, 75 is fine. I mean, that's what I had proposed originally. So. Yeah. so however you give it to them now, is it not as simple just to add that amount to the accounts it's going in? Well, that's the thing is, is there are specific accounts and specific requirements for each account. So that's why I'm saying I would not recommend that we add it to the workers' comp line because there are some departments who already max out their workers' comp reimbursement, and thus they wouldn't get any of the seven, additional 75 that you're proposing for them. I am recommending that we... I, I can come back with a proposal and tell you, okay, we are putting 40 it, of it in operating and 35 it, of it in know, or whatever. Or something. That'll work. I, so I can give you a proposal as so. to how to spend the 75, but it would not be in workers' comp, <coughs> is my recommendation. All right. Joe, do you have a comment? Yeah. Okay. Um, let's go back to the, the school. Sure. Good. <laughs> no, no, I said I sure. No, I said I sure. That. What would the implications be if we went 10 and 10? I like 10 and 10. I do. What do you mean? We bought like 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10 out of, out of, pay, out of um, pay go. We're horse trading. But seriously, I think that's, I think Are we 10 still and 10. Have to break yeah. No. No. But no. it's, it's, I think it's a way to maybe give us a little more comfort on the, uh, on the, mm -hmm. on the uh, reserves. I think we do. You know, we, we had a pretty long meeting yesterday and, the library was here. There's going to be, you know, and we're going to have next year with things breaking. Well, and that's, know, I mean, and that is why something. I like the, I, I'm sorry, I'm walking right over you. <laughs> you always do that. And um, that's <laughs> fine. Don't worry about it. I interrupt people, unfortunately. Um, we're going to have things breaking. We're going to have other needs. Um, that, I don't know if, if that's the answer or not. Um, I know the answer is not breaking the revenue cap. I like I the idea it. of um, giving for the very reasons you stated of things breaking and commitments that we are making, giving ourselves the flexibility of having 53. And again, I'm not envisioning us. So that would take us to 43. I I um, I am less comfortable with 43 than I am 53. I, oh, I, I think we all are. I like 53 for the very reasons of the elevator breaks at the Civic Center. Since we were talking about that, the elevator breaks at the Civic Center, and it no longer can be repaired because it's the original elevator from back to 1979. Really? The Pam, yes. I can't. You know. I can't forget you sitting at the table, and I don't want to quote you exactly because I can't, and saying that she, you do not recommend this county borrowing any money because of, and, and I understand why, because of the interest rates. But, you know, we're in a kind of a quagmire here. We've got, a, we got, you know, I mean, we've so got the school I, that's wanting to do their thing. We've got 
you know, the other things that need to be done. And as I stated, that I feel that pr ship has probably sailed. And so if you're giving me three, uh, it, that if we are building a school, if that is the decision, if we are building a school, and the three <coughs> options are $20 million of pay go, 10 and 10, and $20 million of debt, your finance director is recommending $20 million of debt. I won't go for that. I'll do 10 and 10. Mm -hmm. Angie's got something she wants to say. Yeah, uh, it, possibly a question. Um, so, so there's a line item. It's a new line item. It wasn't there in 24 or 23 called arbitrage. It's 600,000. So it's and I, I explained that at the last correct, correct. And and so I just want to clarify or, or confirm or maybe you can elaborate on when when we don't get bonding, how that would decrease that expense because it won't. When, so so the six six hundred million. I mean uh, six hundred thousand. Sorry, uh, it's it's for the interest that we've earned because of the fact that we have debt, right? It's, we borrow money and then we earn interest and then we have to give so the money back. You can, you all, so we are in the probably first time this county has ever had to deal with this. Interest rates went so low on our borrowings that, and now interest rates have grown so much on our interest income and every piece of that debt earns interest income until we spend it. So that difference, the federal government says you may not borrow at a tax exempt rate. They don't want you to go out to the market and say, I need $100 million worth of tax exempt rate because I'm going to be building something and then just put off building, put off building, put off building and earn interest at 5%. You know, you borrowed it at two and you earn it at five. That 3%, they say, nope. That's ours. That's what's happened to us, is that we borrowed at 1.9 and, uh, and two something, and we're now making five. I can't not pay the federal government their arbitrage number. It's, it, is, it is nothing to do with new borrowings. The new borrowings, I'm probably gonna earn about what I make, and they give, a, they give you a range. But I can't, I can't earn 3%, which is what I have done. <laughs> and if we do the 10 and 10, I just have a quick question. So if we're at 198 million, if we look at your cuts, and let's just say, just for this easy number, we take it down to 193, because you have about 5 million in cuts. We add 10 to that. Are we OK proposing a $203 million budget? Because you're adding 10 million from PAYGO. And, I, and again, I didn't, I, well, we I, don't didn't. I don't recommend that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, yeah. Well, I, I mean, I, I was not okay with a $218 million budget <laughs> at all. But it, it sounds pretty ugly, but the, the reality of it is we are, all we are really doing is adjusting monies that are already there. Um, I, I think we should do 1010, is, are we all right with that? I mean, that, well, that? but that, that is still putting you higher than the proposed budget. I understand. Which you're not technically allowed to do without her. We, we understand the whole thing. We get okay. it. We get it. We're trying to kind of like meet in the middle here. With and the and the state law says if she didn't fund it, then you can add it back. She funded it. Mm -hmm. So there's no ability to add it back if it was already funded. It's funded. Well, she didn't fund it. I, I think she we. Fund it in the CIP. But the CIP, the, the CIP law, is not the budget. The state law talks about the capital budget, not the CIP. 5102 so, allows it to be re put back in. In a capital budget. To restore funds if the executive cuts it from the budget, not from the capital improvement plan. You guys added it to the capital improvement plan, you did not add it to the budget. She added it to the budget. Which I told a specific councilman several times on the phone, wait till the budget comes and then you can do it. Wait till the budget, wait till the budget. And it happened to the capital improvement. Well, I like, I, I think we would have a consensus of 10, 10, however you want to get into the particulars of what's right or what's wrong. I think we're just trying to meet a middle ground here. I, mean, I don't the ones view that, it as middle, middle ground. Well, but we're the ones that authorize the bonding. Three quarter ground. We're the ones that authorize the bonding. We're the ones that authorize the, the tax, the, you know, the tax rate. So. Um, you know, we're trying to find something here and um. Um, I 
I will um, talk to the county attorney, but I don't think you have the authority to add the $10 million. Well, we're not trying to look for authority and all that. We're trying to get along here and try and to figure I, out what maybe I, is the best. I, I mean, we do have the authority not to bond anything. You know, we, we do right, have that authority. Who wants to go down that road? We didn't, I, didn't want I, to go I, as your financial advisor, the, the county council sets the tax rate. Right. The county council has the authority to bond. If the, bond, if the council chooses not to bond and the council does not raise the tax rate, the county executive will have to find the funds. That's what I was suggesting. So that she's got to find not, yeah. not above the 190 well, some We just won't dollars. build the school. <laughs> like, yeah, it's but, very and simple. who wants that, that solution? So we're I don't trying want to, that we're solution. Trying to do, we're trying yeah, to I understand. Like responsible people here and trying to find a good solution. Um, for, I, 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 Are there any or, I, as I have stated, I don't believe it is the right course of action. Yeah, but I think you know things, things change a little bit. I know when you spoke to us back in uh, a few months ago, you also specifically said, which was your your prerogative, that you didn't want to do any. I don't think you wanted, didn't want to do any bonding at all for uh, twenty five and twenty six. I didn't want to do because twenty million dollars load. worth of bonding. Yeah. So why wouldn't this sort of help you along that? No. That. that I don't, like the, I don't like the fund balance that we're going down to. What about the interest not. rates that we're going to be paying and then we're going to be obligated for those interest rates? As I have stated several times today, if there are three options, the only option I recommend is borrowing $20 million. Now, let me yeah. ask, you had a question. Uh, so the $20 million, if we borrow that, we keep the $20 million in our bank account and the interest that we make off that $20 million will kind of make a wash on the right? So is the that what I'm so thinking? So what happens is, is until we start drawing down the $20 million, we earn interest and that interest becomes part of the general fund. So yes, it will offset until we'll we start paying. It. it will offset for the, the interest, the short period, the, the beginning part of the, the contract. <coughs> At the end, will it offset? No, because we won't have $20 million in the bank. But could there be a possibility that the interest rates go down and we refund? Yes. Yeah. Right, well, Josh argument. had a question, I believe. Where are we? Josh. Well, just one quick question. Are, are there, I know we have one here, you know, in the sheet that you provided, obviously, with those funds that we spent to buy the Verizon building or anything like that, are there any assets that we are selling in the next year ahead that we can then make up part of that or that could go back? I mean, the hurdle building anything? I mean we're not we're not even going to start building the hurdle building and or the Verizon building for a year so no since we're collecting that revenue we're getting revenue. yeah I'm trying to get there anything like that that's going into okay nope well one thing we yes can think about mm -hmm. and it looks like we're gonna have to have another meeting mm -hmm. but <laughs> if the executive doesn't want to build the new school doing it with 10 and 10 mm -hmm. we can find more cuts and we can do the maintenance of effort and try to hit the target of that maintenance of effort. But even if you I, cut that funding, I would have to approve it being added for that. You need yeah. to have you have to need to point to Mr. Wilbur to section five one oh four of the education article, which says the county council shall levy and collect the tax on the accessible property of the county, which together with funds from other sources will produce the amount necessary to meet the appropriations made and improve annual budget of the county board. So I think when Mr. Wilbur primes on it, he needs to take into account that section of the Maryland County. And, and, we're, and, and we are stating that so, also Which I think allows them to do that with regard to education. No, it does not allow them to uh, go I above. I think you need to ask Mr. Wilbur. The only, our revenue I think you need to ask the county attorney. We, did, <laughs> and I, we have. We, we have, have already talked to him were, today. Is he as confident as that as, as he was when you all came in and said we couldn't do 5102? And you did 5102 on a CIP when it specifically states a capital budget, so you got it wrong. That is a yeah. capital budget. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's a plan. It, it's a but planning okay. document. It doesn't infor <clears throat> allow us to spend a well, dollar. This, this, um, I mean, it doesn't really matter. I understand what you're saying, yeah. President Cannon, that we need to come to some sort of agreement. Yeah, I would think I would like to do that. Sleep on it if you want, but I think 1010 would be a good compromise for everybody. I want to get back to the MOE as well. Um, I, I think four million is a heavy lift. I wouldn't have a problem if we tried looking at two million. Uh, the question there is going to be whether it's one time only or whether we want to make that um, um, uh, MOE. So might need some uh, from from a longer perspective, longer standpoint, a longer perspective. It would help to get some opinions, maybe from either of you. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, 
I know that they need above maintenance of effort. And I had this conversation with Dr. Stauffer. It makes it so difficult because once you add to maintenance of effort, yeah. that's the new floor. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying that they don't deserve it. They do. So that's the biggest thing between right. us that we'll have to you know, figure and out. And so. not being willing to break the revenue cap for education, which is the only thing that we have the ability to do it for, means that we have 2% across the county to cover all costs, growth. That yeah. is a very heavy lift when, when you see that taking this down to 84 takes you down $2 million and they were looking for $4 million on MOE. Mm -hmm. it, it is a incredibly difficult lift. Well, I guess the question, <clears throat> if, we, if we look at $2 million, what are we looking at? Are we looking at mates of effort or are we looking at one time only? I would um, say at this moment, it, if there is no appetite to break the revenue cap, you need to do it as one time because mm -hmm. there's, no, there's no ability next year then. If, if, if you're not willing to take the step that are allowed to us. That we haven't done in the last 18 years. Correct. But I'd be happy. again, that, that is also one of the reasons why yeah. we're still below the number that we were from. That is. Um, oh, I hear that from people with the education. So I again, get it. we get have it. The, on, the only thing we're allowed to break the revenue cap for is the Board of Education. Uh, we know that. We understand. Well, we don't that. need to do that. We don't, the, the numbers don't dictate that right. we need to do that. No, but if you wanted to give them what they what they think that they deserve, the only way to well, we can do it ten and ten. No, no, no. I meant they're above. they uh, ask at four million for above maintenance of effort is what I. Meant. Well, I mean, um, we might have to cut, make other cuts. We'll, we'll um, give Jeff the last comment because I was just instructed we have to be out of here by five thirty today. Oh. So we can't have a th another three-hour meeting. Yeah, thank God. Go ahead, Good. Jeff. Uh, I, I got a, a fire department. Uh, this is a six-figure question, thank goodness. Um, how did we arrive at 75000 per department? Because we had $1.3 million of contingency available to us, and so we said, okay, we don't want to spend our contingency down to zero, and we came to $75,000. So my understanding is they asked for 53000 per department, mm -hmm. but we're giving them seventy five. If we roll those numbers out, that's two hundred forty-two thousand dollars right there. That's what you're offering is well, again, seventy-five. It, it was I mean, a, if you guys want to it bring it down to random, fifty, it was more of a random number well, to get I'm started. Just, I'm just it, saying that's the seventy-five, what you offered, and that's what is in here. Right, but that's your yeah. paper, though. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. that you yeah. offer. But, yeah. yeah. Sorry, but this isn't set in stone. My, okay, my, correct. My question was, where did the seventy-five this, come from? The seventy-five when, when they asked, I'll finish. Yes. Okay. Hmm. When they asked for fifty-three thousand and they got zero in the budget. Mm -hmm. So we. So why are we giving them more than what they asked for? Because we. Not that they don't deserve it. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be on blast tonight on social media. <laughs> <laughs> so. So the literally. I've proved the that over the last 17 years how much I support the police and fire departments. By the way. Go ahead. Okay. So, so the seventy-five thousand dollars was literally looking at the contingency <laughs> we had remaining in twenty-four. We didn't want to build on the twenty-five number at this moment until we had the SWOT analysis. So we said, okay, what money do we have left over? We have enough to give every department seventy-five thousand dollars, and we want them to spend it on capital so that they don't build their base and then not have it for next year. So that is the reason it was 75, not 53. It was literally looking at the $1.3 million, give us some space for the remainder of the fiscal year if we have to come to council for any kind of budget amendments, and but still give them something, but don't have them build their operating costs, let them spend it on capital. Yeah, and I'm and just really quick, and I know we have to get out of here. The idea of, of people going down to the fire departments and saying, look what she did, she flat funded you, she doesn't support you, was very frustrating to me because we did set aside $750,000 for the property tax credit that you all um, passed. And we also um, have them getting a hand levy si uh, system that they were really excited about. And we also were going to do this capital thing. And like I said, most of it was based on not because I don't support them, but because we were not comfortable with not having the SWAT uh, information. But either way, they're getting the money, and that's the most important thing. When will we have the SWAT? You know? uh, they told, they just, I just kind of said, I, you know, based on, and I don't want to speak for James and Shane, but I know that they've sat in there, but uh, for what I've heard, it looks like it's June. getting ready to wrap up at, oh, at the end of June. Good, okay. Yeah. Um, we'll probably so meeting tonight? next week, uh, Ms. Hurley. Is there? It, I was just making sure. Can we get a calendar, Jim? Man, I hope not. Go ahead. 
Oh my God. Would it be possible to do it Friday? Friday. This Friday. Oh, Some of us have to work. <laughs> Let's. We can start at three. What's our? I mean, two fifteenth is our deadline, right? Yes. Let's go to next week. Let's go to next week because I think we. I would like to. I. I think I would like to give them enough time to reevaluate. I think we would like to have that time. And I like. Okay. Well, then you're looking at Tuesday. Tuesday's wide open. Monday's open. No. Uh, no. no. It may be open for you. <laughs> um, Tuesday at three. Yeah. The 28th. I'm available Tuesday. It's going to work for you. He yeah. said no. To works for me. I'm going to zoom in. I think. You zoom in? No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> I can do two. I can make Tuesday at three work. All right. Everybody okay with Tuesday at three? Tuesday at three. And it, we're going to schedule it for one hour. I can't do it. So my one hour. The last <laughs> That's wishful thinking, my, Sean. <laughs> I know it was. What happened? To this was the last. <laughs> I never said that. I never said that. You implied it. All right. Um, so we're good, right? Yes. So yeah. Thank you very much. Very productive. Appreciate Thanks you all. Hard work. Good work. Thank you. We got to um, advertise that. Jesus. Oh, yeah. All right. Jesus. Yeah, a lot of caps. That's government. Thank you.